there's a lot to talk about here. We have a, a at least one more guest, maybe two more coming. They'll get here when they get here. But we are going to start this off by throwing the ball to our friend, our very special guest today, Brittany Simon. Go ahead. That's what you- me. So you want my initial thoughts, right? Please. Okay. So I've been thinking about this. I went to Business Insider and read the original article where it came from. I tried to look up the research. Um, the person who did the research, the foundation seems like good enough, I guess. What I found most interesting is I think that it reflects um, something positive about society instead of negative, which is that when you give people choice, they don't always choose the same thing. And I think we should see this as a positive thing as an opportunity to say, if we are given choice, what would we actually choose for ourselves? And it doesn't mean we have to choose partnership or it doesn't mean men and women have to get along um, for more than making society move forward, which I don't think involves procreating. I think it involves creating a cohesive and peaceful existence for the people within that society, which can or might or might not include childbirth, right? So I think it's actually a good thing that men and women are kind of deviating, but also it it sort of could indicate a negative only if people are upset about it. So if you're upset about it, I think you need to do some self-reflection. If you're not upset about it, then it sounds like it's just a part of our evolutionary process, right? This is just where we're at as a as a people. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes when we get there. Uh, Fair Queen, uh, no offense, but we're going to skip you because Allison asked me to, and Allison wants to go before you. So if okay. at all possible, we're going to let you go uh, last and ca- give her time to get here so she can have her thing. Uh, so we're going to toss the ball to Rashad. Rashad, thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are that um, currently I think the divide between young men and young women politically is coming from a multitude of sources. Um, I think that what's driving young men further and further to the right, in my opinion, and I'm not sure if the data fully, you know, got into this, but I think that one of the biggest issues is improper communication toward young men from the left, I think is giving people like Andrew Tate and, you know, fresh and fit, easy layups, you know, consistently easy layups. And I think that we need to be a little bit more honest with young men about what um, it's going to take to even get into a relationship. We can talk about you know, finding self-fulfillment and all those kinds of things. But if, you know, these young guys are struggling to have proper, you know, platonic and both uh, romantic relationships, then, you know, we need to have a, an honest conversation with them about what it's going to take to get there. And we will have that conversation perhaps tonight. We will see. Uh, next up, also a special friend of the channel, Tuna Chip. Go ahead. Hey, um... Cool. Really quick, uh, then, because it kind of extends off of both Brittany and Rashad. It's maybe like a intermediary between the two. Uh, I think that this is sort of a positive development, although um, it's like a positive spin on a negative. So men and women are more politically inclined, seemingly at younger ages than they've ever been, like young men and women. There was a period of time where people were political only, you know, once they hit their like late 30s or 40s. And before then, they were very, very much so focused on their individual lives. Um, The divide seems to be primarily aesthetic. I don't think that men and women actually disagree as much as we think that we do. But the way the language we use, the the way we organize, what what virtues we are like expressing pressing inside of our politics is massively different and because those virtues are being reflected back to us by the left and by the right we tend to camp up but if we thought about these as like individual policy issues there would not be as much a divide that's personally my belief but yeah we'll go into that more later yeah i'm, I'm sure we will um unfortunately allison is is running behind so uh, she's not going to get her wish and fairy queen will now grace us with her thoughts on the issue. Um, uh, actually, we, uh, me and Allison had a conversation like prior to coming onto this panel. And so I don't want to take too much away from like what Allison is going to talk about when she does eventually arrive. But it's essentially like the take that Tuna gave and the, and the take, I th- which I think is true. I think that it is true that most of the differences that we see um, between men and women, like with that specific chart from the Financial Times, um, is largely as- expressing an aesthetic difference between um, men and women. And again, if you look at actual policy decisions and actual political preferences, and um, you'll see that there is less of a divide. But one thing to also note, like just in general, like this 
You can find studies that date back like a couple of years ago. Like it seems to historically be the trend that men, women tend to uh, drift more liberal anyway, and that men on broader trends tend to drift to be more conservative. So it's not the the fact that like women tend to like tend to aesthetically choose to be more liberal and that men seem to be self-reporting as being more conservative is not a surprise, right? That's something I think that we we probably could have expected probably even like 10 or 15 years ago. So the question is like, why is there this large of an aesthetic divide? Um, and Tuna and Brittany, I, I hear both of you saying that you don't think it's necessarily a negative thing. You think it's possibly a positive thing. I think that's something that I want to discuss. I could be convinced to believe that that's true, but I'm not sure that that's true. I think that like the aesthetic divide like seems to reflect a cultural, it seems to be the expression of the culture war that we're currently in between men and women, which I'm not sure if that's an entirely positive trend. Okay, well, when Allison gets here, uh, she'll get here. Uh, she's uh, texting me right now, apparently. Um, so hopefully she'll be here soon. But I, I guess I want to uh, start by pushing back a little on the it's just aesthetics thing. I'm not sure that's true. I understand that perhaps it's not as a, a wide of a, on policies specifically, it may not be a wide of a, of, of a divide as uh, is suggested by the labels. But I think there are actively, right, actively uh, larger differences being driven. Because if you are in one of these camps, if even aesthetically you identify as a liberal or as a leftist versus as a conservative or as a Trumper or as, as whatever, it's going to lead you to at least aesthetically support different types of policy pushes because it, you want to stay in your tribe. You want to conform with the majority of what they say. And so I think that there are substantive differences between the right and left, at least in America. Um, and to, to kind of suggest otherwise is a little, I don't know, I, I think it, it's it's a little naive to, to use maybe a word that perhaps, but let's get Allison in here and see what Allison has to say. Allison, welcome. Hey, Allison. Hi. Here, wait, let me. I'm up. Hello. Okay, Allison. <laughs> Um, I'm going to let you give your opening and then we're going to get into it. I just did a spiel about how I don't think it's not. Um, everyone else seems to think it's aesthetic. I don't think it's as aesthetic as, as you'd like to think. But uh, go ahead, Allison. Give us your thoughts. OK, yeah. So I have missed the opening, but the I'm guessing the argument's been made that like, yeah, they self ID as liberal and conservative at like pretty disparate rates. But the policy uh, positions, they're actually closer together. Is that what's been kind of alluded to? Yes. Okay, yep. yeah. Um, I mean, from what I understand, even a similar thing happens in the abortion issue where, like, I don't have the data on hand, but, mm -hmm. like, women are more likely to call themselves pro-life. Men are more likely to – or vice versa. Men are more likely to call themselves pro-life. Women are more likely to call themselves pro-choice. If you get policy wonky, though, and ask, like, how many think abortion should always be banned, never be banned, be banned at different points, it's a lot closer together than these, like, binary labels would have you believe. Um, I do believe that's true, uh, but even even when you look at like the policy position polls, men are still a bit more conservative and women still are a bit more liberal. And I do think that people are becoming more ideologically polarized in general. So um, I think it's interesting to note that in some countries on it wasn't like the same universal thing was happening in some countries, the men were actually turning right wing like pretty quickly, like in Korea and Germany. Yeah. But yeah. in the US, it was there in the articles even notice this, it's the women moving faster. It's the women identifying as liberal at like much quicker. So different things are happening in different countries, but we're like there is at least an aesthetic divide nonetheless. At least like people are culturally identifying as different labels more. Because even if you think the divide is superficial, it doesn't exist to the same degree amongst the older generations. So that's still interesting. What do we mean by From superficial? I'm not quite understanding that argument. That could be superficial. Or, well, like, just the idea that it's more of, like, a culture war battle and that, like, these people actually want the government to do similar things. They just feel like they're more different than they are. That's oh, what I, I mean. See. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I... I... So I'll push against the word superficial, although I still think that aesthetic is the is is the is the realm that it exists on. 
uh, there's this there's this idea of um, of splitting uh, of splitting the ambiguity or something. I can't remember the term exactly, but the the idea is that the more radical a view get expressed, uh, a view is expressed as the more the people f that are soft on an opposite view feel like they need to match that level of intensity. I'm not sure how many of these like big swings are happening from like a, a direct motivation nearly as much as like responding to media, responding to the way that people talk. I don't think that there are that many people who are like super, super pro uh, abortion such that no matter what is happening in their life, they would stand in front of a Planned Parenthood. But if they see people radically arguing for abortion whenever, however free on the street in the back alley uh, on the government's time they're going to then strike back in the opposite that's what i mean when i say it's like it's an aesthetic disagreement which is that the intensity is determined by the opposite the uh the camp that you choose feels more like a, a concession or like oh you got to be with a gang you got to be with your group um but we don't necessarily all agree on the left or all agree on the on the right in that with that level of extremity it's just like we feel like we have to be on one side or the other we need to be seen we need to respond if that makes sense yeah so look you guys are saying it's aesthetic but it in the very next breath you say oh but they're going into these camps which are trying to pass massively different extremist legislation on these well no 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 the argument is not that they have like actually super different legislative preferences but that they have different cultural identifications like if you pull them on policy preferences yes men are a bit more conservative women are a bit more liberal liberal but they are a lot closer together than just the raw because like the business insider article and the financial times article at least the u.s graph was based on self-identification as liberal or conservative but there are polls there's one going around and i can try to find it and send it in the discord but it they asked people between 40 and 50 questions like it was much more in depth than just do you are you liberal or conservative what's your demographic data and like the sexes were much closer together so um I don't deny that like the sexes are like uh, like culture war, like men are more likely to like be sympathetic to conservative culture war material. And I think women are more likely to be sympathetic to liberal culture war material. Um, and then there's overlap and variability and all that. But that's what I when I've said superficial or when I think aesthetic, like I am not suggesting that they have super dramatic like legislative preference differences. It's more just like. Do we think cultural vibes <laughs> with a different surface level? Like, do we feel like this? Because I don't think any of this is surface level. I think all of this will eventually have some sort of manifestation, be it legislative or just like on a day to day interaction or cultural level. So are we saying here that it's like, like, poof, like it's kind of like a poof thing? Or we do we think that it's going to lead to something? No, it'll probably um, lead to something. Uh, we are talking about we are talking about people with like desires for change that are being offered one of two possibilities and i'm saying that the reason they go with one or the other very much so is not policy based like the reason that you're standing in front of uh, a building tends to be pretty pretty like you know religiously based in in the case of, of abortion that's that's not one of the main policies probably a bad analogy but if you were to then say something like god people who would uh talk about border control a lot of people don't actually know what they want out of border control they just know that they don't like what's being done right now so when they get offered two possibilities they're not going to choose one based on like an informed perspective like this is what the data says is going to reduce the amount of harm for Im uh, immigrants or is going to be most economically stable they're going to choose which one matches some of their other presuppositions this is the conservative view so i'm going to go with the conservative view because i'm a conservative these are the three conservative things i believe conservatives are more consistently right so i like them more this is the liberal view i don't really consider myself you know i like gay people i like women's rights i'm gonna go ahead and go with an open border policy because of that i don't know how many people are genuinely single or like you know maybe like two uh, topic voters, but I think that most most of us are. I don't think everybody is like uh, knows all the all of their opinions on all different fields. Yeah, I just also want to kind of like again reiterate that it's not this isn't the only data we have on on gender gaps, right? So to say it's aesthetic, I, I think is missing the point 
Because when they go to the ballot box, when they go to the voting machines, there is also a gender gap. And it is pretty large, right? So they're not just saying, I want these different policies, or I, oh, I identify as this camp or that camp, and but our policies are relatively the same. When they go to actually vote, they're... A di- there's a discrepancy, a, a pretty large discrepancy between maybe how people... men vote and how women vote, at least in America. I can't speak. Well, maybe people other... vote based on culture war issues. Maybe people are yes. more socially motivated than we give them credit for. Yeah. I'm not well, saying I... that it's inconsequential. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Aesthetic does not mean illusory, inconsequential, meaningless. It means okay, that how, what are, why are we making the choices that we're making? We're making the choices that we're making because we are taking it by assumption that the people that are right about some stuff are going to be right about the other things and because we identify with them and their virtues that they espouse. Hey, I'm going to let my uh, very anxious dog out real quick, but I can hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, very used to, ahead, like, you wanted to say something you're trying to get in. I was just going to throw this out too. Like, it's also the case that like, just because like somebody, like, I mean, we've mentioned before, like, just because you're aesthetically aligned with a particular like wing of politics, it doesn't necessarily mean you vote that way. And a classic example is the abortion example, for instance, right? There were many people, many conservatives who identified as pro-life, but when it came, when Roe v. Wade was actually overturned and they flocked to the voting booths, it turned out in many states that are red states who vote consistently conservative um, they actually supported like a, an upheld abortion in multiple states. Um, and that includes like many, and that's true of many conservative women as well, who would describe themselves and who often will describe themselves as pro-life. Um, but when it comes to actually making a decision like on the ballots as to whether or not they're going to support pro-life policies, they, um, after Roe v. Wade was overturned, they didn't do that. So even if it's the case that you do find somebody who is female who describes themselves as conservative, again, like that doesn't necessarily correlate with a policy decision that they're going to make or, or with how they vote. Um, I just, we also have to consider like um, there definitely were abortion referendums that um, went the pro-choice way in red states. That definitely happened. But I do wonder like – if you are if you identify as a conservative woman but you disagree with your party on abortion and you don't have a referendum you just have mm-hmm. a two party vote like there's no referendum up mm-hmm. how likely is that self-identified conservative woman who yeah disagrees with her party on abortion but like clearly not enough to like lose political allegiance for the movement altogether like mm-hmm. i have a hard time believing that she like switches her vote but mm-hmm. it's possibly true i have that's just based on intuition so I feel like no matter who you are, no matter what camp you fall into, you believe you're voting in a way that will give you more agency and option. And I think ultimately that's why it comes down to like values, whether you are a one issue voter or not. And it really comes down to that divide being a part of it, like incredibly social, but also sort of like the expectation of how my vote will impact my life. So I feel like people are in one way pressured by their bubble to vote a certain way because they don't want to be the different person in the group and then in some ways that nuance isn't even allowed with our voting system technically like in a lot of ways people are ashamed to vote sort of like more nuanced but I think ultimately like this this is all very social so when I saw this graph I was just like oh what a social reflection of like how people end up projecting themselves go Go ahead please Before you, before you go, $5 from Tesla Johnson. Wick, you once said white liberal feminist policy comes at the expense of men and minorities. Thoughts from the panel? Never said it. Total lie. Thank you for the <laughs> sub ice beans. Really appreciate you. Uh, go ahead, Tunichi. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just just to take up Brittany on that, on that topic. So we talk in public. We vote in private. And mm-hmm. that's going to make up for a substantial part of this difference. Um and I do think that all of the like political activism that it's become normal on the left and the right has been through mediation. It's not through your workplace. It's not through. It's it's primarily through like what posts you do, what <laughs> what things you say on social media. Um, that's not substantive, and it's also extremely social. It's, if anything, it's only social, which is like the weird weird thing. So what if the culture war? Now, I don't think that is as true, because unfortunately, what it comes down to is that who ends up running for office is empowered by those social platforms. So it, it, becomes, it becomes substantial at the moment that they get elected in and they believe their constituency on what they say. Um, but like, when does 
when does that become con consequential? Does anybody, does anybody think that like, so you share a picture of a aborted fetus and you say, this is, this is, this is what you're doing to fetuses. Or is that actually like changing the world and changing opinions? Or is it, is it like a black square on Instagram? It's just reflecting a temporary forgettable political signal. Like, Depends what's the line the between actually political and something that is just participating in the social, participating in your bubble, as you would mm. say? It usually just starts social and then becomes political, right? I mean, like, if you look at, like, most, like, hyper red pill content, it starts off as, like, you know, dating advice or, you know, here's what you do with women and blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, you're talking about, you know, conspiracy theories involving the Jews, the Bilderbergs, you know, like, before you know it, you get into 9-11 conspiracy theories. Like, it starts social. It starts innocent. And then before you know it, you know, Nick Fuentes is on the panel talking crazy. Like it's, it starts off really social. So I think that when we like look at it as, you know, uh, from like a surface level of like abortion or whatever, it goes, it goes deeper than that. Like it starts off really, really, I guess, shallow. And then it gets into like radically insane political takes. And I think it's really important for us to realize that this shit can manifest in a legislative way. It can manifest in voting. And right now we're in the social stage. We haven't reached that point where young men are like wild and out in public or at the voting booth, but like it could get to that point. I mean, am I overreacting? Like you, I don't think you are. And here's why, right? Uh so first of all, I've been trying people are saying I'm low. Can you guys hear me fine? You are You're low. low. I, I turned you up on my hands. Really, really. Mm. Um I I turned you all down i've turned myself up i don't know what else to do i'm getting closer to the actual mic i turned you up on my stream you're fine <laughs> okay okay i just want to make sure that i can be heard and and everything's good okay well, with that said um well i also want to i also want to talk about why this is happening i i do want to get into that but i just want to to kind of piggyback off what rashad said here right like we are entering an era of politics that uh, is on the more extreme end compared to the 20 years ago, right? Like uh, when the Clinton era, the Obama era, even the Bush era, uh, you had substantive differences. But today, the more extreme voices seem to be the loudest, right? They seem to be the most influential. To the question of like, at what point does social kind of uh, hang in with the crowd, putting the black square on Instagram or showing a picture of an aborted fetus uh become influential i think it it always has some form of influence depending on when it's done and where it's done and how it's done will influence the context of it right like will actually influence the impact that it actually has but i think that the we the the idea right because this isn't happening in a vacuum there's also a lot more uh pressure to date in your in-group, right? So you don't have conservatives and, and uh, liberals dating anymore to the same extent. It still happens, but more and more and more groups are pressuring date within your, your in-group, right? This is becoming more of a hard and fast rule. A lot of people are saying, if you uh, if you support Trump or you support Biden, we're going to swipe left on our whatever, our whatever apps, right? Um, this is going to create, right, over a long period of time, if nothing else happens, if this isn't checked, a greater divide in the country than there is now. Almost like a, a two Americas. And I think that that does not bode well for our ability to govern the nation. Uh, and I don't think it bodes well for the world in general, because this isn't a localized to America for law, uh, um, event, right? So I, I don't know. Maybe we can uh, discuss it that. But I'm also curious what you would all say is the reason that it's now worse than ever. Like it's always been there, but why is the explosion now so much greater on, on almost every graph that I saw? Well, okay. Oh, sorry. I just want to say, well, growing up and I, you look, I haven't been in politics in quite a long time in the sense that I was before, but I was raised in politics. I was raised in watching every single election that ever happened, watching every history doc that ever happened. And when I was growing up, you did it date the opposite political party like James Carville was quite famous back in my day because him and his wife have opposite political like opinions he was like the infamous like oh, they made it work so I'm curious about that perspective as well as far as I'm concerned it feels like we're kind of going back to sort of the bubble that I grew up in my whole life which is like yeah you don't mix teams bro they don't work because it's values based like what are we gonna fight over dinner about who gets civil rights tonight like I don't have time for that we got to be on the same team so a part of me is a little like 
yeah, we're just going back to the 90s a little bit, which is maybe good or bad. I'm not sure. It's definitely bad as a society as a whole, but it's probably better off for our small communities as well. Uh, I, I think that most of the time when women become like the front leaders of political action, it's like a rid redemptive position it usually is like an exhaust valve like the in the united states at least i can't speak for other places but women's in, in involvement in politics started with the industrial revolution child labor not being a big thing women you know basically doing what they could to ban alcohol and try and uh make it so that you can't just have children work for like five cents an hour so like women are like you pull the lever. Same thing happens with the world wars, making it so that women can work. And then right now, I think that women have been seen as like, w men are disenfranchised. They don't care about politics. They don't care about anything. They just want to get on their alpha grind set. Men are sad and, and, and individualistic. So that's, that's why I think a lot of women are becoming like the big front leaders or something. Um, and then men see women taking positions and they become more political because that's sort of like normalized. And I think that that's where it's like starting. Is it just like, it's popular notions of what the opposite sex is doing and who has to like take the wheel. Um, that's why I think it's happening right now. I, I am interested in thinking, so it, Brittany, you said in the nineties, do you think that that stopped for a little bit in the two thousands? Like I thought in the I thought in the '90s that that would be the perfect individualist era where people weren't political well, and they were just fucking. You, well, I'm thinking more like because in 2000 when when the Bush Gore election happened, like that I distinctly remember being a child and I'm on VH, VHS or you know, camcorder. My dad's like, "Who are you voting for?" I'm like 10 years old. I'm like, "I'm voting for George Bush." And my best friend, who's a Democrat to this day, we've been besties our whole life. She goes, "I'm voting for Al Gore because that's what our parents." We're doing and so we were mimicking them right but when we she and i came up i was a conservative okay i voted mccain and palin and then i voted hillary and barack obama for my next two elections and like she was the democrat so we came together because my life was changing when i realized i was becoming more liberal and progressive and the politics of the conservatives weren't giving me a voice right so i i do think there was a you're right a, a change at least in my area in california of the 90s having this like very suburb joy if you were in the suburb at the time and then switching into this like very like we need to fight now we need rights because I remember abortion being a very hot topic in California for minors and I remember that was a huge divisive point in my political story so I'm trying to think of like what part of the country was experiencing what and then what economic background was experiencing what at the time right I mean I when I when I, I had the same experience uh, oddly, not from my parents, though, at school. At Ooh. school, one of our projects is we were supposed to make on construction paper with big markers w like uh, what political candidate our family was voting for. And we were like probably five or six, maybe, uh, maybe mm -hmm. not even. And um, I, I look back at that and I think it's a little weird. But that's because like I don't think that that means that we were more political. Strangely enough, I think that politics was seen as more innocent. So like you could let a child participate in it to normalize it to them, kind of like, hey, uh, what are you going to buy with your $10 at the grocery store? It was that level of like non-conflictual. Nowadays, if you ask a child whether or not they would vote for Trump, uh, you're asking a child like, do you want to be punched in the face by a black kid tomorrow? Do you want to be pantsed by the gay kid tomorrow? It's, it's like kids are a little bit more like political in the capital P. Like they are fucking each other up. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not the same question. I mean, anymore. I did grow up in a very, yeah, like you said, it was like very innocent. Like even if your neighbors had opposing sides, you like still had a barbecue weekend with them. You still like made it work. You, you certainly weren't. But then to be honest with you, I think everyone in my life has become, it, the Democrats in my life hate fucking Trump voters. The Trump voters hate fucking Democrats. Like they do not want to get along and they're upset their kids are still getting along. And I think that's funny. But I, you know, I do think I see a difference like as well. You're right. When I think about it that way. Yeah. It's a little bit more physical. What, 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 what was it during? I mean, MLK is the is the closest like the civil rights movement is the closest when like kids were beating the shit out of each other in high school over political differences. There's like namely in New York City, obviously, I have a um, maybe some people know this song or not, but the, the, the song Guilty of Being White uh, or <laughs> that song is made by uh, made during that period because uh, Ian Mackay is a white kid in the suburbs of New York City who is getting his ass kicked 
for being white because he lives in a neighborhood that's nothing but black people and the controversy is like stemmed down to him and it's like a weird moment that you can't relate to during the 90s you can during the 80s you couldn't during the 2000s it's getting a little bit closer now although it's not as extreme it's, uh it's like i if we're going back we're going back to like reagan era we're going back to like you know the closest you can get is like reagan youth type shit where it's like uh, kids wearing the Trump hat to school, being inside of a group, walking around. That's 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 weird. That kind of ideological mm -hmm. positioning. Like, because I don't think in it, with young boys, they are like, does anybody did anybody does anybody here have a kid? Do you know whether or not there are like is an active young Republican chapter at your school right now? Well, OK, I, I in the U.S., like. There are so many, I see so many narratives about, oh my God, the young men, they're being right-wing radicalized all over the place. They're just drowning in right-wing rad radicalization. And like, I mean, the alt-right happened and like the alt-light happened. That was a real cultural phenomenon. Um, but like by the numbers, it does seem more women are being politically activated in the opposite direction. This is not as like, you can say, well, that's not as costly of a thing. Like, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's true. But like, on the, there's a graph. There's not a single issue, regardless of partisan preference, that women aren't more worried about. Like, it's like, uh, who thinks what is a big threat to America? And literally, whether it's a conservative priority or a liberal priority, the women are thinking it's a big threat to America, like between 15 and 20 points more. This was in either that Business Insider or that Financial Times article. I, uh, to, to, to piggyback off this a little bit, just to, not to interject too much, but I found that the reasoning in the article was interesting, at least the hypothesis they gave, right? Um, and I want to talk about it uh, because thank you for bringing Histrionics. it up. Um, that was just a one-word article, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the reason that the article, or one of the possible reasons that they hypothesize in the article is because women have time to worry about this. Men do not. Men are worried about themselves. They are struggling in a way that women just are not and so women are able to worry about all these externalities they're able to worry about um uh the starving kids in africa in a way that men are just trying to trying to survive the next day i want to know like uh, do we agree with that do we think that's bullshit what do we think gang i don't think that's true at all i don't think i don't think uh women are sitting around with more time i think women just Women socialize a lot more. They socialize a lot better. So they're probably more likely to have a, a, a friend of like eclectic backgrounds. Like they're probably more likely to have a gay friend. They're more likely to have a, a tr maybe even a trans friend, you know, depending upon how, you know, how many friends they have. Um, when you have a, a demographic of people that are making so much more friends and interacting with so much more people, they're probably bound to have a lot more concern for what goes on in society than a demographic that's a lot more lonely, probably plays a lot more video games, probably doesn't have a lot of homeboys. If you don't really have a lot of friends, you're probably not really as concerned about what goes on, especially like for me as a young black man. Like, I, there's not too many issues in society, legislatively, that like, I'm too bent out of shape about. So it is kind of easy for me to kind of just chill and not be too concerned. I think the problem, I think what's driving men so far away from giving a fuck about what goes on in terms of, like, liberal politics and policy is the fact that, like, what is the left really, like, t saying to young men? I think young men are seeing a lot of empathy going toward minority groups, toward the women, toward a lot of these different communities. And young men are kind of sitting there like, look, like, we're not as educated. We're a lot more broke. We have a lot less friends. We're struggling in terms of dating. Like, we don't feel like there's really much of a future ahead of us. Why would we give a shit about what's going on in society if we don't really think we have a future in this society? So I think that's what's driving the, the, the divide is young men feel disenfranchised and the left is kind of like, okay, well, just make sure you're not assaulting women. Just make sure you're not making women uncomfortable and then go play. I don't really see how that's pulling men toward liberal ideology, which is what we want. A couple of things that I just wanted to spit out, and I think that this is important to mention in regards to the article. So the article is specifically referencing like the political ideology of men and women from ages 18 to 29. And the reason like why that matters, especially like when we're talking about voting turnout, 
is because women is because people like from ages 18 to 29 like vote at less they're they are they just don't turn up to the voting booth as much as like people that are older right so like according to pew research here it says like in 2022 36 percent of voters were under the age of 50 compared to 40 percent of voters in the age of 2018 right so the vast majority of people who are actually going to the voting to the voting booth who are actually making the biggest swing on policy decisions are mostly over the age of 50 at least according to like this um, recent study right so that would mean that while it is certainly true and while it's certainly important to note like the political differences between men and women in Generation Z, it's also important to note that more than likely, they're probably not going to be, they're not, that's not the population that's really going to make the biggest impact on what actually winds up happening at the voting booth, right? Yet. So I think, I mean, because they're less likely to vote, they're less likely to like to wind up at the voting booth in the what first do you, What do you think they're going to do when they get older? Well, what we or we're going to do when we get older. I mean, older. They, I mean. I mean, so like just on that note, and this is something like you were mentioning before, like I think it's important. I mean, we can certainly talk about like the culture war and about how it's affecting men and women and how and the reasons like why men and women might be different like politically right now. But I'm looking at a chart right now, just historically, and this goes all the way back to like 1964. Women historically are more likely to be registered to vote. They are more likely to report voting and they are more likely to, let's see, uh, they're more likely to report voting. They're more likely to report that they are registered to vote. This goes way, and this goes way historically back. Um, like for instance, so in 2022, you know, um, the number was like 70% of, it was 70% of women as opposed to 68.2% of men. Um, in 2020, it was 74% of women as opposed to 71% of men. And if you go all the way back, but if you go all the way back to 1980, you can find that the number is 70% of women as opposed to 69.3% of men. And if you go to 1992, the number was 73.7% of women as opposed to 60. Do I look like a woman? All those numbers. Okay. In one ear, not the other. Okay. I don't <laughs> well, know. But numbers, the point right? is that the point is, is that like women historically are more politically active anyway, just generally speaking, this is not isolated simply to like the past 10 or 15 or 20 years. It's historically seems to be the case that women are more politically active. That's, that's a, that's a, that's an agency gap though. Right. It's, it's, it's that men feel like they have more agency inside of the workplace. We feel like we have more agency in our day to day lives. That's why it goes back like that was true in the in, back in the day for a really long time for that. Like, I think that the under reporting like we are talking about politics as an extension of like the household. Like that's how it's seen. It's seen as part of the family. The family is, is doing the voting as opposed to work doing the voting. Um, men are more political in their language, certainly, seemingly. Or they're more like likely to frame things in a, in a political language versus like a lot of politics that women participate in on on the regular is considered like an extension of ethics or being a good person or like the 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 language of politics in terms of electoral. But I don't think that the I don't think that the Gen Z is like less influential. I think they might be more influential because they're like the cultural producers. They're going to be the ones creating the narratives, creating the media going forward. They're going to be like the ones forming the way that we talk about different policies going, even if they don't vote on the things, they're at least going to create the, the, the conversations because they're mm -hmm. the one writing articles, getting new creative jobs. Like, does that mean, do you think that, that, that that's less influence or just to the people that were saying that Gen Z has less influence or it, uh, that seemed like it was like a divide, a division. Saying that like it has no influence or that it's not of any importance. But what I'm saying is it's of significantly less importance in comparison to other generations, because you're right, like it might be true that like Generation Z does have a huge cultural impact. Right. But you mentioned, for instance, they're more likely to be writing articles. They're more likely to be like it, who is hiring Generation Z? OK, who owns the companies? Who is your boss? OK, it's probably not going to be a 29 year old Zoomer. Right. It's probably going to be a 65 year old Thank boomer God. who owns the company and is like run it for years. OK, that's who winds up like. So even if it's nominally true, yes, you might be the person that like is entering the workforce. Right. But the people who actually owns the jobs, the people who will hire you, the people who have money to support you, the people who can bolster your career, those people are not within this age demographic. And I I'm, and people, I understand, oh, like, if I may, those people also aren't the ones you're uh, having a beer with. They're not the ones you're hanging out with. They're not the ones you're trying to date. They're not the ones you're uh, uh, that are in your social group at all. Right. So. Again, like I understand okay. what you're saying about how more legislatively and things, uh, the uh, the young people just don't have the impact that the old people do. Get it? Got it? Good. But I think that um, 
when it comes to influencing the day to day and what we're talking about, and even yes, influencing what legislation even gets put on the table, right? I think that like things like social media, things like uh, the the black squares on Twitter and all that shit, right, do actually drive at least some of this kind of thing in a way that I think that just looking at the voting stats doesn't capture my opinion. Yeah, I don't, I'm not even saying that it's merely about like voting policies and like it is about that, but it's also about who owns the business that you are applying to be hired at, right? It's also about like, who is the person that's going to admit you into the university where you're going to meet those friends? Who is the person that's going to be teaching you? Who well, are then the we're, people? We're, then, we're stri- then we're flipping then we're flipping the we're flipping the switch then towards men having more control because the majority of the people that are going to be employing you are going to be men then is it in the business it is in is it in the voter or is it in the social construction like depending on which de- like we're talking about different demographics with all three of those okay are we talking about the why here because like i have two <laughs> yeah, points. No. okay so yeah, yeah, to yeah, no, no, point, can, i just yeah, want to say like why. women make a 24 hour day into a 36 hour day because we're civil ser- we're servants okay we're civil servants second of all i was watching aiden ross today on bradley martin because i like to stay in touch with the boy bubble and i was watching aiden and he was like trump's gonna win bro trump's gonna win i don't know one person who wants biden and i was like oh look at him expressing a view that he tells me who's around him right and he wants to get men to like get up and be a part of their life and hustle and be alpha and go to the gym and i did leg day today so i feel you aiden but Taylor Swift is actually getting women to register to vote. Taylor Swift is actually influencing the polls. So I am curious to see if Aiden can really rally those men. Because I'm not going to lie. I love to see it happen just for shits and giggles. But I think Taylor is going to beat him. And I do. And I think they're going to vote liberal. So it's interesting to see how like culture is being influenced and how these influencers want to be taken seriously to some extent, which I think they should be if they want to be. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting that I saw that this morning. So and I think that cool. plays a huge role. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So uh, I, I see the super chat. I'll get to it in a second. But um, so are we saying that, that Taylor Swift is going to be influencing the vote in a in a serious way here? Is that OK? No, the, there were the there were crazy thing? numbers, actually. It kind of yeah. makes me a little and I'm I'm pro Taylor Swift. OK, I love to see a woman just print money and like roll around in it. OK, so I'm like pro Taylor Swift. But to me, it is a little bit sad. I'm like, damn, people really do just fucking worship these celebrities. They really will care about politics when they didn't before because a celebrity told them to. It's crazy. It was like 18 percent of respondents said that they were like rendered more likely, which this was a headline. Who fucking knows? It could have been a bullshit poll. OK, but like it was probably like rage bait. Like the study was made for this fucking article to be written. Like all these people are retarded. They're going to go out and vote just because Taylor Swift told them to. But, but is that like, different than our parents? I'm sorry. Again, I grew up with like celebrities, radio hosts. No, I've been on all the true. radio host shows. I've met Sean Hannity. I've done that shit. Well, what but are wait, they? there's a difference between, I mean, I agree that like political pundits can be like crazy echo chambers, but like there is a difference between a political radio host and a person who is like musically talented, just giving you their politically op- political opinions. And it's like, you know, you just like their music. And so you're like, they're probably good at politics too. Like versus like, I don't know. Rush you remember Limbaugh how, or people remember who how explicitly Laura Ingram just talk about wrote that book, like time. shut up and dribble. You know how people always write these books, like shut up and yeah. like, don't play sports. Like when basketball stars were like talking about their political sides or like, she's like, shut up dribble ball. And I'm like, okay, isn't that just what's happening now with celebrities? Are they just, no, I, mean, I, mean, I definitely, I mean, I, you go ahead. You, no, I was no, just going to say, I'm pro Taylor Swift talking about her politics, right? Like, that doesn't bother me at all. I wish the general population would be less, like, celebrity obsessed, but that's kind of a shallow criticism. So it's, like, it's applied to people forever, regardless of political affiliation. I wanna, so, like, I, I do want to pass the ball to uh, uh, Rashad here, but before I do, let's get the Super Chats. $5 from Artemis Fowl to say, between married men and women and unmarried men and women, the only demographic that votes more Democrat than Republican is unmarried women. Interesting. Uh, Five dollars from Tesco Johnson to say hiring women is a bad idea because they'll get preggers and leave for a year. Women, in fact, work less than men. Thank you for the five dollars. I actually uh, want to build off that one. I want to build off that one. Yeah, we haven't addressed one of, the most, 
most important parts on this when we're talking about the demographic graphics of, of voting and, and acting. The girl boss identity and also the increasingly gay workforce of, of tech jobs. We are, we, are, we are getting to a position where the norm and like the social norm we're trying to get closer to is not reproductive. And that's totally not scaring me. But the right wing is obsessed I'm putting, with the idea I'm putting, that they I'm will outweigh the left. We're gonna get it. We're, that's gonna take us in a direction. We're gonna I, skip over the breeder question. Okay, whatever. Well, fine, fine. Thing, we'll, we might. I'll put a pin in okay. it. We might get back to it. But I think this. I want to discuss the actual topic before we get into um, Malthusian or whatever the fuck it is, right? Like the. Anti-natalism. Okay. Um, I want to pass the ball to Rashad, see what he had to say, and then I have a question to maybe maybe steer this in a direction instead of... I feel like we're hitting, like, all over, right? And I <laughs> yeah. want to kind of just center this a little bit. But anyway, go ahead, Rashad. I could be wrong about this, and someone, like, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to, like, discount, like, the numbers and the statistics that Ferry brought up and anything like that. But we do have to keep in mind that Gen Z is dealing with a political landscape that I don't think many other generations can completely relate to. Like, we've had more intense situations like uh, the civil rights movement and things like that. But we do have a much more kind of insane space where people are spending a lot of time, much more time indoors, men and women. People are consuming content that is 100% tailored to their biases on a consistent basis. People are becoming more and more angry and angry at one another, at least online. Um, this stuff will spill over eventually. And Gen Z is not going to just disappear when they turn 30. They're going to be the next, I guess, boomers. They're going to be older. They're going to be even more politically engaged than they are before. And I think that, um, mm -hmm. I think we have to talk about, I think this divide in terms of why men are becoming so much more like, like, like Brittany brought up, like, you know, Aiden Ross talk about Trump. Like, what the hell does Aiden Ross know in specifics about Trump's policy and what he could do for, for America? Not much, but all these little kids like that are that love Aiden Ross, that love Sneeko, that love Brad, that love all these guys, they're absorbing this shit 100%. It's not just like going over their heads. And these kids are eventually, as time goes on and people become even more radical and we got the election coming up, people are, young people are becoming more invested mentally. And this will affect at some point legislation as Gen Z gets older. So I think that what we could do as the left, and I, I, I know I'm like culture warring the fuck out of my arguments consistently, but I do think part of why young men are being dragged toward the right, like has nothing to do with abortion, generally speaking, I could be wrong, but I do think it has to do with conversations with men. I don't think men are that bent out of shape about abortion. I could be statistically wrong, but I do think we're missing the mark on really cutting into where, you know, people like a Andrew Tate who connect to young men through Aiden Ross, trying to break that connection between the young people, really, really young people, and people like Andrew Tate getting to them through a Aiden Ross. I mean, are we are we going to ask the are we are we asking whether or not the like Aiden doesn't know policy. That's that's fine. Probably. I I I might not be giving him credit, but I'm assuming from the way that he you know he, he at least his character at least his character. I listen definitely to him. Doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Okay. Well, cool. he knows Trump it, is funny. I didn't watch it. And he pisses people off. Literally, him and Bradley were like, "Trump is so funny. He pisses everyone off." And I'm like, <sighs> and that's I love him for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know we've been. We've been seeing a lot of people doing the same thing with the Biden thing. We're always like Dark Brandon is absolutely the same kind of joke trying to reflect it back. And I don't think I don't know how much Taylor knows <laughs> about Joe Biden, frankly, or at least how much she knows about Trump and how much she's like anti-Trump or something. Um, I don't know whether uh, or, or not that is. And this is just going back to the aesthetic realm. We are talking about like the echoes of the Kanye Taylor Swift debacle. We are talking about like, at some point Kanye came in, he interrupted a woman, it made everybody mad, now she's back for revenge, the women are gonna get the Democratic Party. You know, we are talking about like, uh, this, is, this has been going on for several years, it wasn't political at the time, didn't even look political at all. It mostly looked like just like a rude dude and a woman who, who thought she was hot shit and he put her in her place. Like, but that that's how everybody's thinking about it. Everybody's thinking about like yeah, I'm Trump let you is finish. so rude and evil. That's my uh, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. But uh, I would I just wanted to say right that uh, uh, Wick is the best channel of all the time, and you should probably subscribe to him. But no, in, in a very serious way, like uh, so 
just to circumvent your uh your your monologue here, uh, Tuna, I am curious. Got me. Um, are you saying that the Kanye Taylor snatch the mic from him event uh was the was one of the focal points for the divide that we're seeing ideologically between men and women today? Is this I'm saying that it, it probably had more influence on this moment than we're giving credence because we do think of just like Republican and men and all of that. Men are taking up too much space. They need to close their legs. Uh, and then on the other hand, it's like women think they're hot shit and like they're so creative. Like I think that's what most people are thinking about when they're actually voting at the ballot box. <laughs> I think that's what the Zoomers give a shit about. Way I, more. Okay, are they one? Are they ever going to get there before they're thirty? And and what does this mean to prepare them to get ready for when they're ready to vote at thirty? Because like even me and my demographic, like lots of my friends don't vote. I tend to vote. I want my sticker. I'm like very petty, you know, just give me my sticker. But also, like certain things are more important to me than others. So I feel like I'm as a sister of seven younger siblings. As I watch my littlest brothers who are big Andrew Tate fans and they love Aiden. That's why I stay in tune with the boy bubble so I know what they're doing. They always tell me, they're like, well, like, they don't want, they don't feel like they are being heard. But more than that, there's no one they can look up to. And the people they can look up to who are badass and awesome and have muscles are definitely not on the Democrat side. Sorry. But I have an answer to that. Like, but that's not just because of like um, the Democrats. That's also because if you notice, like over the years, like ch church attendance and attendance in the pews is down. You'll also notice that like the number of people that are like uh, that are registering their children to go attend Boy Scouts is down. Um, people are less likely to enroll their kids in community centered things where you would typically have that type of leadership is down. Like typically speaking, it we used to, like I know like from my brothers, I'm sure like some of maybe some of you if like you've had this experience, the men on the panel, um, many some of you may have like um, have had that type of leadership in like the activities in sports, in Boy Scouts, in the church, in your ch church youth group. Today, you're many um, many people that grew up in like in Generation Z are less likely to have had that type of leadership and to have had those and are less likely to have had those types of experiences because there's less attendance in the pews. So I don't agree that it's because feminism and it's because of Andrew Tate or all these things. I think that it that I think that it's because of a wider cultural thing that's um, a lot more complicated and a lot more nuanced than that. But Kanye um, snatched the mic from him. OK, bro, that, that has to be it. No, nah, uh, bro, that take was the funniest shit I've heard in a hot fucking minute. Don't ever, don't ever abandon that take. Keep that shit for life. <laughs> she fucking almost fucking killed me. But it's not a, I don't think that's that crazy of a take. I do think that we're both in emotion. And whatever you, whatever, however you came to that conclusion, at some point, share that shit with everybody else. Cause bro, but what I'm saying is, I think that it's true that, yeah, the lack of male role models in society, I don't think like that has a lot of economic things as well. Like, you know, parents not really having as much time to like put kids in different programs and things like that it's one of those things where like we've arrived we are where we are young men have increasingly more single you know parent households which are mostly you know female dominated uh young men don't have a lot of after school programs they're taking part in we are where we are now the question is how do we acknowledge and combat the cultural win like how do we how do we how do we alter where young men are being pushed in this absence of male figures because i can relate to not having a male figure and i had to learn how to get my shit together oftentimes from the fucking internet which is crazy but that's the that's at the point where we are right now two uh two things before i let allison go because i know allison uh wants to get in here um two super chats artemis file for ten dollars uh has a panel already defaulted to men being at fault for not having the same view as women when every metric and that's it has shown that's the it guys running the, oh, sorry you can finish that but it, i've already the, said it the right wing it, or the left wing is not losing men they're just gaining women they're gaining yep. women at a crazy yep. rate it's not like the right wing is taking all the men away the left wing is just not getting them like they are snatching up women left and right that's what's happening. Yeah. That's what those graphs show. Grabbing shows. all the women. Um, two dollars for Tesla Johnson. The real issue is collectivism. Discuss, please. Thank you for the two dollars. Thank you for the ten dollars. Um, snatching women left and right. The left. Uh, let's talk about it. Um, do you think that there is an active effort by people on the left to court women that just doesn't exist on the right, or is that the argument? Oh, it yeah, exists on the right. Hard. It's yeah, hard to court sure. women as a conservative, right? Because, like, what are they offering me? What's the deal? What do I get if I join? 
no free no free no freedom for your body i mean that's no one's gonna take that you know i don't see women taking that deal but we look at the graph like 25 percent of young men identify as liberal and like 45 up to, up to like 43 are um liberal amongst women i think young men are becoming less and less empathetic toward liberal ideology looking at the stats myself i mean i could be wrong but i don't think the left I is like keeping men and then grabbing more women i think nah. i do think the left is kind of losing young men I, Am I wrong? Well, I think I the right wing has always you go, had before more you go, Before you go, before you go, before you go, I'll let you go. Uh, Two dollars from Artemis Fowl. Read the entire super chat. Yes, I will. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Sorry. To sorry, to Artemis Fowl. Uh, okay, I'll just start from the top. Has the panel already defaulted to men being at fault for not having the same view as women when every metric and pupil has shown the left running to the extreme and the right moving only slightly? There you go. Fairy Queen, hit it to agree with what Allison was saying earlier. And I do agree. I don't think, I think that men are less likely to, young men, I think are less likely to show up at the polls, period. And I'm not, and I base that based off of the statistical fact that like men are less likely to vote and are less likely to be registered to vote in general as opposed to women anyway. So I would expect that 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 trend probably, and that's not a new trend. That's something that has consistently been true for decades. So I would expect that to be true anyway, like between like in Gen Z as it is. But consider what's happened over the past like 14 years, the generation that the Zoomers grew up in. We grew up in a generation, uh, we grew up in a generational time with the Me Too movement. We saw our first female vice president, our first female speaker of the house, Nancy Pelosi. Um, we had our first um, female political candidate who was the nominee for a national political party, Hillary Clinton. Um, we have saw the we witnessed the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We, these are massive cultural these are massive cultural moments that happen in the lifetime of women who were Zoomers. And not only that, these are massively political movements. And so it would make sense that if you are someone, if you're a woman and if you are a part of Generation Z, why you would feel more politically motivated, why you would feel more motiva- motivated to show up to the polls and to care more about politics because of the fact that all of these different events that have happened, everything that like, you can reference in terms of men, those are like seismic cultural differences. But I can't, can you point to me like a policy decision or somebody being voted or something specific? Because most of the time when I hear people talking about the issues that men are facing, they usually talk about the fact that men are less likely to go to college. They're less likely to graduate from college. They mention that, for instance, right? Or they mention the fact that it's harder for women, for men to find a dating partner, that they're more likely to, they're the less, less like, they're less likely to have sex and they're less likely to have had a part and they're more likely to have had a partner at a later age. Right. Mm-hmm. But their talk, those are interpersonal problems. Those are problems that have to do with what you interpersonally choose with your education and with your and your sexual lifestyle. But they're not things that have to do with I can't legally get an abortion. I can't legally get the health care that I want or I don't see myself represented in political office. So therefore I'm going to go to the voting booth so that I can vote for this so that I can have this in the in the state in which I live. Like, is there anything like that that's happened for men specifically? Because all of these other things that you're talking about, you can mention them and you can say that they're, they are like aspects of culture that affect men. But what I'm not sure is, What's the policy decision or the political figure that you think is that you're going to vote for that's going to change that, right? Like, what is that going to be? Like, what is the move for that? I can I mean, I I'll, say one thing real I'll, quick. Go ahead, then two minutes. Then two minutes. So I can try to find it, but there was a paper published in some European psychology journal, okay, and they were exclusively polling European men and um, young men, European young men, and they were trying to determine – um, like the difference in uh, sexual relations, like uh, opinions about the sex class, uh, sex classes. And they noted that like, it's actually really interesting because they actually have more egalitarian policy preferences. Um, they actually are more likely to be pro-choice than like previous men. They are more likely to have like fine or neutral opinions about women in the workforce. They are actually like metrically egalitarian, but they have more sexual resentment nonetheless. So they had like, um, there were specifically sentiments that like just basically expressed uh, grievance with one's current state in life. And like, uh, along with an implication that like the status of the other sex class or like the rising status of the other sex class could be causally related to like your own distress. And Mm -hmm. they said, identification with that type of sentiment is way up, but that Mm -hmm. to give these men some credit, it's not like they are like literally like becoming more like politically sexist. 
right? I guess, yeah. Well, I guess what I'm asking, I'll, I'll put it this way, okay? Why is voting for Donald Trump going to help you with your sex life? That's really what I'm asking, right? Why is voting for Donald Trump going to help you influence you? Well, and I asked you without saying culture is downstream of politics and putting him, yeah, they would say that it would have like downstream cultural benefits for masculine men is probably what they would say. Well, uh, okay. But, but, you can say that's ridiculous, but that's, they would just well, say well, culture's but, downstream from politics. Well, but the reason a real like, man why, in there. Well, but the reason like why I asked that question, right? Like if you are a woman, right? I am going to vote for this politician so that I can still get an abortion, so that I can still have access to contraception, so that I can have access to benefits to help me if I'm a single parent with a, at home with my child. That's the reason why I go to the voting booth, right? I'm not voting politically on behalf of my sex just because of a downstream cultural effect, aesthete, right? I'm voting because there are very specific material benefits that I need, where if I don't show up to the voting booth and vote for this policy, then I get screwed, right? That's why I go. That's a big reason like why I think women are more have historically been more politically active. It's because they rely upon resources that are given by the government to a greater degree in comparison to men. I mean, I can I I don't I don't buy this idea that most of the men voting for Trump are doing it because they wish their dick was wetter. I think most of the uh the male uh incentives with Trump are immigration policy, fewer people coming in, so that means less uh Less competition with people that are willing to take really, really low pay and push them out of economic opportunities they want. I think economic restructuring away from educated and specialized labor towards manual labor is a huge, huge thing. So when we talk about his his motion for coal, his support of fracking, him not being just an EPA shill, that's the kind of thing that men like. Uh, men definitely appreciate the fact that Trump is not sort of like at the social whims of the media. Whether or not you like that or don't like that, that is the type of thing that people respect. They like the idea of like a strong leader, someone that doesn't seem to just be a pushover to whatever popular notions are out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's the reason that men have liked Trump more than women by and large. And obviously women like the Democratic Party for all of the policies, policy reasons that you've already outlined. Go ahead, Rashad. And then, I want to uh, ask Barry, um, I want to ask, so I don't want to underestimate like surface level politics. Like you asked, you know, like what is voting for Donald Trump going to do for young men's loneliness or whatever the case might be? I, I think on some level you might be underestimating like surface level perceptions of like culture war and how that can affect legislation or like, well, just voting. Even if the problems aren't necessarily real in men's lives, the simple, like the the cultural like echo chamber we're seeing right now in politics could in the long term affect voting and could derail the serious problems that women vote for when they go to the voting booth and they ch they pick Democrat because of literal real reasons like you mentioned. I don't want to underestimate how this kind of culture war phenomenon can affect young men on a surface level and influence their voting long term. I, I don't I, know if maybe I'm. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I just want to I just want to piggyback off that before we toss it to Fairy Queen, and then we welcome uh, Sigma Femoid here. Laugh has uh, graced us with her presence, and we'll get into what she Hi. has to say on the whole thing. <laughs> uh, um, but before that, before that, I, I just wanted to kind of push back on that. There's no substantive issues that really affect men today that they're actually voting for. I think a big one again, whether this is actually true or not, whether this will actually like uh fix the problem for them or not is beside the point they think they will immigration is a huge one right men especially young men are looking at their work prospects they're looking at their prospects for housing they're looking at the rising cost of health care rising cost of housing uh they feel it's harder and harder to to get enough money to make ends meet and then they look at all the people coming across the border and they say wait these people are going to take right uh this opportunity from me, right? I'm going to have to compete with them as well, and it's going to make it harder for me. Now, I think they're mistaken, but this is how they feel, right? This is what they think. This is what they feel. Well, and, and that's a burden unique important. to like low skill workers, right? Yeah. They Which, say, you again, know, educated the, people, you don't have to worry about migrants taking your jobs. They can't do it. But, they but can't again, take the blue collar happen. jobs. Oh, look, look at look at how many young men are not educated, educated anymore, yet. right? Yes. Like this, this is also piggybacking off of that. So they are looking mm -hmm. at their, their dwindling prospects, uh, education wise, right? Administration wise, they're looking at their dwindling prospects, um, with housing and healthcare and jobs because of immigration. That's the boogeyman that they blame. And they're like, well, who's going to fix this? 
And they think, again, because rhetoric from Trump and his side is much stronger on this, uh, they think that Trump's the answer. Uh, I think they're wrong, but that that that's a substantive issue. Uh, but bef- I want to let Fairy Queen respond. I see you, Tuna, and then we got to get uh, Lavin here, and then we'll go to you. Well, you can toss it to Tuna. I'd like to hear what he has, has oh, to say. Okay. Every every low sk- every low skill, which I don't like that term. Low barrier to entry is probably more accurate. Every low barrier to entry uh, like job that is not available is another person that does have to pay rent, does have to like eat food. So like it doesn't even just affect them. It, it affects the tax burden of the entire state. So if we just shove in a bunch of people that don't have language or skills that are going to have a good fit inside of the economy, that's also the main thing that people care with Trump about. Like we don't, we already have a bunch of unskilled men <laughs> that don't have jobs already that are born here. They're called like, streamers. People don't want to just I, I prefer the term in. streamers, Tuna Chip. Okay, you don't have to use those other terms. Streamers. Hey, listen, man. If 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 you can turn a webcam on, you're probably a little bit smarter than some of the people I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So I agree with like what you said, Tuna. I do think that that's the reason like why men typically vote like more conservative, more conservatively in comparison to women. But again, like this is like goes back to like what I was stating earlier. That goes back to that. That doesn't sound to me like merely a matter of a cultural aesthete, right? That sounds to me like very much rooted in the economic material conditions that men and women face and like specifically like how they differ between men and women. And it sounds like that seems to be like impacting like their devoting decisions and like in a way that might be more profound as opposed to merely as to as opposed to merely cultural influence five dollars from artemis fowl and then we'll pass it to lav uh i don't know why women think men prioritize their sex life as much as they do men may actually vote for things that extend past self-gratification Thank you that, 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 that's not what i was i, I always i thought fairy queen was talking about a very specific type of man when she said that like the Mm -hmm. dejected internet male that's like the topic of so many conversations on twitch.com right like i don't think she was talking about the average trump voter like of Mm -hmm. course there are plenty of policy prescriptions on the right wing that have nothing to do with sex drive Mm -hmm. i think that she was kind of isolating it to i could be wrong very clear i don't want to misrepresent you but that's exactly what you that's exactly right and i and i'm really glad that you said that allison because like earlier rashad when you were talking specifically about the population of men that really needed to be dragged over to the left, right? That seems to be isolated, right? Like typically speaking, when we talk about like what that population of men care about, I hear this all the time. Like we talk about incels, we talk about male loneliness, um, we talk about um, lack of male role models, right? Like this, like what you're telling me right now regarding like lack of economic prosperity, lack of access to jobs, right? Concerns about immigration. That's very real, but that's never something that's brought up in relation to this population of men, right? And so, and I hate to say it, but if you're somebody that like is able to exist like in your basement, right? And you don't really go outside and you're kind of lonely and you don't really talk to a whole lot of people, you're European. probably not, you're probably not, you're probably somebody that lives like a middle class to a lower middle class existence, right? You're probably not going to be the population of people that's really concerned about somebody coming in and taking like your low skilled or like your blue collar job away from you. You're probably somebody that has access to a computer, right? That probably has like a low, that is able to spend lots of time on the internet like this. You're probably somebody, and that person. I'm sorry, that person is probably statistically less likely to be concerned about some of the economic material conditions that Tuna was mentioning earlier, which I agree exist and I think is a big reason like why men tend to vote more conservatively. But I don't know like how influential that is for this population. Thank you, Allison. That was a- it is still uh, I'm, I'm going to reiterate it affects everybody after you we it is a welfare them. state that is being paid for by it. So like okay. it does affect them. They are okay. they, they okay, are dejected on. on that land. It's but not direct. That- it's not direct. I agree with that point. They are not, but that is what that is what they are being appealed to on. They're being does appealed the to 19, on this idea. But does the 19-year-old Zoomer that's like afraid about getting a girlfriend and feels like he's like going into like the edges of the manosphere, is he really thinking about that? Is he thinking about the tax burden on the state? Is he thinking about is that is he thinking about the impact on welfare? I don't think that he is. I, I mean, think they could still vote like, even if they don't think about those things. They could still impact decisions made in this country with just blind just 
pure culture war voting. I, I think that's a, a real threat, like a real yeah. possibility. I could be wrong and I'm open to being corrected, mm -hmm. but I do think we're kind of understating how mm -hmm. much the fucking insane conversations we're having on the internet can make someone vote for some shit that in the in real life doesn't even benefit them. And I well, think but, like, but, but the point of what but the point is the point is like even if that's true, like even okay even if let's look at, let's think about like a woman who is the same age, who is also yeah. like in the basement and doesn't do a whole lot of stuff. Right. Literally. She is more likely to wind up at the voting, uh, wind up at the voting booth simply because of the fact that even if she doesn't care, she doesn't care necessarily about the welfare or about like uh, the state of welfare or the tax burden, but she probably does care if she's able to get an abortion. And she probably does care if she's able to have access to contraception, which means that even if like she has roughly the same class status as this other example of man, she probably cares, is probably way more likely to wind up at the voting booth. And again, as I stated before, the stats bear that out. Women are more likely to vote. They are more likely to be registered to vote in comparison to men. Okay, Lav, take it away. What are your thoughts here? Hi, sorry. I haven't even been listening, so I'm sorry if I'm being, uh, whatever. I just got done shitting my fucking brains out. So now I'm here and we're queer. Um, I think that this is almost directly correlated to evolutionary psychology. Uh, I think that there's a basis in the way that women vote and the way that men vote. And I think especially right now, there's a degree of social contagion happening in female communities, especially voting like very left. Um, again, like uh, this gentleman said, Rashad Crenshaw, um, where women are voting for things that don't even necessarily benefit them just because they heard their favorite influencer say it, just because it's what's popular right now, just because you get social currency for voting that way or for speaking up about something that way. Um, but yeah, we've seen this all throughout history. You know, women are more empathetic. They're more compassionate. They're going to vote that way. Uh, and, you know, liberal progressivism, uh, you know, d democracy is the more empathetic political party. It just is. Conservatism is the opposite. It's more logical. It's less uh, compassionate. It's, um, you know, that's it. it <laughs> these are almost male and female parties. Uh, yeah. And so it makes sense that it, that this is becoming true. Can I ask, because uh, you, you, you mentioned there that women are voting for things that don't necessarily benefit them. Can you give us a, a couple examples? Uh, yeah, like I'd say, for example, uh, you know, I think a huge one is going to be, especially in the next election, um, a lot of like trans bills, obviously, like a lot of uh, uh, potentially like lowering the age of consent for uh, hormones, which obviously does not benefit women because we know that female teenagers are, especially autistic female te uh, teenagers, are way more uh, likely to uh, fall victim to social contagion. And obviously, you know, Tumblr and TikTok and all these things are entering the minds of, of our young teenage girls. Um, or even sex work, like even uh, uh, legalizing or decriminalizing sex work uh, is a big one as well. Um, or even like the birth control pill. <laughs> for example, like I think the birth control pill was supposed to, uh, you know, even abortion, abortion was supposed to, and the birth control pill were both supposed to help women uh, control their reproductive capacity so that they can work, they could go to work like men, they could show up like men, they could suspend their fertility so that they could work without falling pregnant. Um, and yet the abortion rate has only gone up since the birth control pill. So it's just, you know, women, it's just one of those things, just one of those things. Well, um, I mean, the argument for the abortion going up after the birth control pill is that everybody embraced casual sex more. And so there are more accidental pregnancies because yeah. the birth control pill is really easy to fuck up, like one antibiotic and like you can get pregnant. Like, well, you miss a, a day, yeah, like, of course, but it's also a, the cultural shift because when yeah. fertility became a choice, then fatherhood became a choice. So it's a cultural conversation as well. But still, that was consequential to women voting um, in a way that, that we didn't even see. I mean, there's nobody could have guessed that that was the way that things would pan out, but they did. Any responses to this? Nobody guessed wanna... that if you gave people an option to utilize a tool, they would use it? No, nobody would have guessed that something to suspend fertility would mean infinitely more abortion and unplanned pregnancy. I don't buy that, but all the what same. What do you mean you don't buy that? That's why it was created. Oh, okay. Uh, let's say that you give women more money to spend. That also means that women are like. No, but you're getting. Through. No, but you're, you're giving, giving them. them no, no. I'm saying this is an economic principle. People already know about. If you give people jobs, 
they're going to get credit cards, they're going to go into debt. Like, that's, that's a normal behavior. It's not that strange. Sure, we thought that there would be more casual sex. We didn't think that there would be more babies. That's the, the medicine is, is so that babies didn't happen. There's more abortions, there's more babies because there's more sex. It's, 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 it's a pretty... Sure, but, all, been... but now everyone is on birth control. So no, oh, yeah. we did not think that there was going to be more babies. I mean, at first, they only let married couples get birth control for this reason, because they wanted to make sure that, like, it was actually people controlling their reproduction and rather than people who, like, weren't otherwise having sex having sex. They said, well, these are married people. They're going to be having sex either way. You might as well let them be able to, like, control their fertility. Um, and there was one Supreme Court case that said states, you can't ban it for marital couples. And then there was another Supreme Court case a couple years later that said, no, you can't ban it for any couples. You can't draw. It violates equal yeah. protection to have an arbitrary boundary between married and unmarried. But they yeah. did predict this. They said, we don't want to Some just encourage did. casual sex amongst the masses. Some people surely did. I don't think when you but when you uh, just on a on a base level, when you give something to someone to suppress something you don't think that it's not going to do that and well, then it's going to make it worse. Well, you give them the education to know how to use it. I don't take the birth control pill because I'm not going to remember to take sure. it. I have the rod, right? Like, I play to my strengths not to get pregnant. Most people don't even know, like, you have to take it every day at the same time. you got to be consistent. Most people aren't even thinking about these things. And so I think, like, education plays so heavily into these options that we're given. And also education plays into how people will end up voting because I do think most people aren't voting on policy. I've seen it my whole life growing up. If you ask anybody about what they think about anything, it's always about the social issues because social is king. And so how you feel socially is how you end up voting and you vote for the policy. I think when you ask women, that's true. I think mm -hmm. when you ask men, that's true. I, yeah, I don't think so. For men. I think it's more true for men than women. Women have a lot more. I don't think so at all. I think we have more real tangible shit to vote for than men. You disagree? Uh, no, I think that, no, but I'm saying that I think that when you ask a woman what they care about politically, it's going to be more social. When you ask a man, it's going to be more economic. Or maybe that's just the social case I'm in. No, no, no. Social you're, dividing, no, no, no. you're dividing I meant, between. I one, meant you end up voting time, because time of the social time. expectation of your vote. I you're, would you're guess using the word that social a, different. Yeah, go ahead. I would guess that a woman would be more likely to vote against the interest of her own tax bracket because she really agrees with the social policy than a man would. Yes. That's just a guess, but I would guess that. Two dollars for Tesco Johnson. Boys wear blue and girls wear pink. End of story. Thank you for the two dollars. Uh, Five dollars so for Artemis Fowl. Women vote for weak district attorneys and pro criminal policies to feel good. Uh, True. That, let's go to Fairy Queen. Okay, so I think that like I think that you're half. I, I think that I would half agree with you and half disagree with you. So I would agree that like when you vote blue, that there are going to that it's a mixed bag, right? So you mentioned, for instance, like trans bills. You mentioned, for instance, like. Um, autistic teenagers, especially like women and like the exorbitant rise, like in, and I would agree that, and there are many women, particularly conservative women who are not happy about these changes and who dislike these changes. Um, you also mentioned sex work. I think that that's, I think that our concern about pornography, particularly AI pornography has become magnified over the past like 10 or 15 years. So I would agree with you that just voting blue is not necessarily going to be an all win for women. It is a mixed bag. But here are a couple of things that I don't agree with you with. So one of them has to do with your mention of abortion. It's kind of true when you said that there was an uptick. But I'm looking here at all of these charts that talk about like the rates of abortion. And like from like the minute it was legalized, we see a huge spike that goes like this. And then it goes slowly downward to a trend. And now we're seeing a teeny tiny uptick. OK, so what that Wait, means from, from what year I'm talking about the I'm talking about after the pill. Oh, I thought you were talking about abortion. I thought Aren't you said we also there were just more abortions. Isn't this like a whole tangent to a totally different discussion? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted no. to clarify that because I made it because I, in my, I could have been wrong, but it thought that you were saying that like there are more abortions and that like, people are getting more abortions now. After more the pill. Well, I, that, well. We saw an uptick in abortions after the pill became widespread. Okay. So I misunderstood. So I thought that you said that there was a huge uptick. I don't even necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't even necessarily way. think that's a bad thing, but this is a tangent. Yeah, um, I, I can I can remove I can remove that and bring up the fact that I think women also like it was said earlier women are like pro criminal voters I think that a lot of people especially women in California are having to deal with the fact that they're being loose on crime and then also their houses and their apartments are getting broken into uh for in San Francisco and Cal in Los Angeles from the people that they're trying so so desperately to coddle um so yeah I think that that's another which thing. people specifically oh, but, uh, homeless people. Lab, are you surprised? Criminals are providers. <laughs> are they? Where do you think? Where do you think? The, how do you think the rent's getting paid? Somebody else's couch. 
Somebody and, else is <laughs> no, dude. I'm, also, I'm like, but but I think that, but I think that like it's important yeah. to mention that like you also get a mixed bag like when you vote conserv for conservatives as well. So there are significant benefits that come from voting blue that don't just everything have to is do consequential. With but it also has to do with welfare, right? So for instance, like single mothers, for instance, they are more reliant upon social programs. They are yeah. more likely to care. We know statistically that women are more likely to vote for the interests of women and children when they're voted into office. And statistically speaking, the political candidates that you're going to vote for, if they're going to be women, they are more likely to be Democrats than they are to be men. So sure. if you are somebody who is a woman and if you're a single parent and you have children and you're worried about and you want policies like breakfast and lunch being a freely available at schools, you're more likely to vote for a Democrat as opposed to a conservative, generally speaking, because you rely on those. I don't know if that's stuff. true. It depends on whether or not the conservative is Christian. But I would, I, th I think a lot of conservatives are very pro-social programs, especially for underprivileged children. But I don't know if it's, it doesn't well, look we had the a same. Recent bill pass, a recent bill passed, a bipartisan bill, actually, uh, with, I think, in the House at least, uh, more with with uh, more Democrat votes, but they, a sizable number of Republican voted uh, for it as well. Uh, there were on the against side, there were seventy one who voted against it. Um, I think twenty three of those were actually really uh, really radical Democrats as well, um, because uh, the the bill itself was a an omnibus bill and it included uh, tax breaks for the rich. Uh, so a lot of, uh, of the more extreme Democratic mm -hmm. candidates just didn't vote for it in that uh, because of yeah. that. But I wanted to pass the ball a little bit to Rashad. I'll let him kind of uh, maybe maybe recenter us a little bit. We'll see. But go ahead. Oh, yeah. Farrah, you're changing my mind. But I want to ask you a question. Um, do you think the lack of quantitative data on the effects of the cultural shift in men in combination with the current lack of voter turnout amongst young people and amongst men, do you feel like society can rest easy as it pertains to like the shift in, in young men's like, cultural beliefs as it pertains to like voting and legislation? Do you think like society, the West can kind of just like pass it off as like, mm, not really going to affect the voting? Like, how do you feel? Because I think you're changing my mind right now, but I want you to like get it deeper in your head. If you want to convince young men to vote blue, you need to explain to them what material benefit they get from voting blue. So I think that like we know this like is more women having sex with them, mostly. Well, not even that, but mostly like so, for instance, like I mentioned to you, for instance, like young women, the material benefit that they get are more social programs for their children, more protection for their children, access to abortion, access to contraception, access to et cetera, et cetera. These are the benefits. So you're saying they need children. They need children no. to vote blue. No, I'm saying that they need to understand like what benefit, not necessarily. What, what are I'm the benefits? Like, are those benefits? What are the benefits specifically for men? Like, like specifically, specifically for, for men. men as a man, what benefit do you get if you vote Democrat? What is the benefit that you get from that? Because women have a specific. You get there, so that, yes. unironically. Well, like that well, is I'm the benefit. Sure. Can you elaborate I'm, on that, Lav, please? Yeah, uh, all, all the all the things that benefit men, like uh, you know, access to women's abortions so that they don't have to become fathers after having uh, premarital sex or having frivolous sex, uh, you know, access to pornography, access to sex work, uh, being you know, being able to commit crimes with less a uh, harsh sentence, like hedonism. If you're in a hedonistic male, you would vote Democrat. But yet we see in the data, right? Like in the in the links I gave you all before the show. Right. Less and less. There, there's a, a bigger mm -hmm. divide. And yes, a lot of it is women being radicalized. Right. And going way, way, way to the left. But there is some drop off uh, when it comes to, to men going left as well. So are you is your argument that um, hedonism is down? Because I don't see that. I don't it's see hedonism that. being down. And so if hedonism was the reason to vote blue you'd think it'd be up but it, it just isn't well no i, I also think it's access to women i think a lot of the reason why men are even pretending to be liberal or is because of access to women because a lot of women are like oh i'm not you're gonna say the n-word in front of me i'm ne you're i'm never gonna touch you again or like you're you don't think that uh like you think that a homeless person should go to jail for breaking into my house i'm not gonna fuck you well, here's another explanation too, though. Like, this is something like in Pew Research. So, 68% of like voters of people that voted in 2022, like they were about like they mostly voted Democrat. So, mo and I think that like if we we Democrat you know, the meant old something adage, different. Well, but you know the old adage and the old adage, and it's as true as that. If you're young, you know you vote you with your heart. If you're older, you vote with your brain, right? Sure. What is it like? I can't quite recall like what exactly the clip is. But if the point you're is, is a Republican before 30, you have no heart. If you're a Democrat okay. after 30, you have no brain. 
Yes, yeah. exactly. So it seems to tend to be true that like younger people tend to trend more liberal anyway. And I think that that's historically been the case anyway, that younger people tend to vote more liberal. Like, so I, I, I don't know if it's necessarily just access to women. Also, again, young people don't typically turn, aren't great at voter turnout. They made up like about 30%, 36% of the voter turnout, right? It's mostly adults. It's mostly people over the age of 50, right? Sorry, but like your 65 year old, like Democrat dude isn't was, doing that because he wants I'm to get- I'm almost positive that that changed in the last ele- election. Hmm? I'm almost positive that changed the last election. It Turn might have. Up, but it didn't completely reverse. But also, aren't we just- Completely dodging the question, we're saying that if men don't vote, the Democrats don't need men because men are just not turning out to the votes. So if women yeah. do, and this is what's currently happening, women now run the popular vote. They are the popular vote. So like, what is, the question shouldn't be, what can the Democrats do to get men? The question is, and everyone's asking it on the right, is what can the Republicans do to get women back? And True. they can't come up with anything. Right now, you're going to get like some trans stuff. You're going to get a little bit of abortion stuff, but that requires religion. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a little bit of anti-rape stuff, but that requires that somebody be okay with saying Mm -hmm. something racially controversial. Like that's the only type of people. You have to already have your foot, one foot in the door of being conservative Mm -hmm. to become a Republican right now. So if they can't come up with anything, Democrats just win. Well, so the answer, I'm glad that you brought up the answer to that question, Tune. If the question is like how to get women to vote more conservatively, the answer is you really harp on trans stuff. You emphasize like protection of children. You make sure that the people that you're voting for are voting for policies that affect mothers with children and that affect children and then make sure that they don't lose access to welfare programs that they rely on in order to feed their kids. That's an important aspect. Um, I think that I that's think, true because conservatives no, are very pro that. So I'm very, I think, I think I one know. way to I, get women to vote conservative is by telling them the truth and by not well, coddling here's, them anymore. Here's another truth. Like for years, like there have been numerous cases of where Democrats have tried to push to raise the legal age of marriage to 18 in multiple states. And historically speaking, when they try to do that, they are often like shot down by conservatives in court. And the reason like why they try to raise the illegal age of marriage into 18 is so that young girls, specifically teenagers, aren't groomed and forced into marriages that they don't want to be in. There, there was a famous case in New York. There was a woman, she was an Orthodox Jew, and she was nearly forced into a marriage at age 16. That's not being spearheaded by the Democrats, however hedonistic you may want to paint them, that's being spearheaded by the fundamentalist uh, religious conservatives who are spearheading that legislation. And women don't want to vote for that either. Women need to know that when they're voting for a Republican into office, that they are somebody, they're voting for somebody who is actually going to protect their interests. And if that person but they don't, but do that, women's then... interests change every 10 years because of social contagion. So what the suffragettes were voting for, we are not voting for now as women, right? So like, even no, with that, true. this is very controversial. A lot of women, it would, it would behoove them to get married younger than to deal with all the things that they're dealing with into their late 20s, early 30s. Why? why? I'm That's not saying why. every woman. I'm not saying why? every woman. I think, well, I'm under the impression that a lot less women would be in OnlyFans if they just got married earlier. Well, <laughs> let me put it to you. But why? Okay, can I hold just on, ask? Hold on, 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 hold on. Pause. Just, just pause for a minute. So I, I just want to be clear, and then, then I'll, I want to hear what everyone else thinks. So, are you advocating that women get married younger than eighteen? No, I, I think that I, I think that the age of consent should be twenty-one. Personally, okay. Uh, but I think that I'm I'm just saying that you but can't. What we're talking about, right? Like, women, what, what, what women want changes way more often than what men have wanted historically. Oh, do you know why? Yes, Elaborate. Women have a tendency to be more open-minded and adapt and progress faster than men. Men tend to the become more stagnant the, and hard-headed uh, and don't change. a good thing. Yes, progression is always number one. No. See, this is yes. Retarded. You might not like the changes, not and you might not like the conflict that arises. But these men that will stay unmarried and this is how Ron one. fell. This is how Ron fell. Even That's still, not true. Though. Progressivism for the sake of prover- progressivism no, no, no. is fucking retarded. No, so, you're thinking about progressivism from some micro bubble, dude. Zoom out. We're talking about a human species that's evolved over years and years of years. No, to come to this I'm not point thinking about it that way. Well, you should. You're Name right. a form of progress. Women material are, to actually discuss it over. Well, the problem what is, is that this is the impact. Like, we are living women. history. You're right? right that women are higher openness and they're higher agreeableness. This is consequential positively and negatively. And it makes our voting block 
all over the place. Look, these men that are not adapting to the changes and they're not procreating with these women should genetically like cease to exist, right? Oh, like gosh. ultimately, this is the product. You can say that these men, including even my brothers, like if you're not going to adapt and change authentically, you were never meant to procreate, right? Procreation should come. Yeah, we should just all be nudists and we should all fuck I didn't say that. I don't know why you're picking that up. Do. I'm saying you shouldn't punish women for wanting to choose their lives because men are unhappy. That they have chosen what theirs. Wow, well, well, you said something. Well, they're like saying that, that the women are unhappy too. Well, well the women are consistently unhappy. unhappy. Okay. Women are consistently unhappy always. We are the unhappier sex. We're no, we're not the unhappier sex. Humans you're are literally in the middle of a meaning issues, crisis you're right saying now. That women One at a time. One at a time. time. You're huh? saying that women's issues keep changing, but you do acknowledge that women's issues are still real in spite of the fact that they're consistently changing, right? Like you do acknowledge what do you that. Mean, what do you mean by real? Like serious, like not being able to like have an abortion, like that, like Roe versus Roe versus Wade. Sure, but, but the only the only reason that why that's become a big problem is because the social cult, the sexual revolution changed the social culture. So yeah, it's consequential, but it's also it reality, I don't necessarily. It's I don't like. I'm not pro abortion. I'm pro uh, like not having to have an abortion. You know what I mean? So like you're yeah, not gonna, you're, you're like, not gonna, you're, you're not asking for like cultural like change in terms of what women are taught, rather than stripping women of the right to have an abortion. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So okay. I can, I'd like to like go hit in on that specifically, like what you said regarding OnlyFans and sex work. Right. Um, and I'd like to just ask you, like, like, why is it, do you think that like young women are like being, why do young women become involved in sex work? I genuinely, this is just, and this is a real question. It's not rhetorical. Uh, not access to enough wealth. Not access to enough wealth. Okay. Yeah. Well, like you would agree probably. like Social that, currency also. Well, for sure, that might yeah. be a part of it, right? But if the real way is to grant girls like an economic pathway, that would mean like bolstering public schools, that would mean bolstering policies that allow for girls to succeed in school, right? We have that. Women are doing better in school I than men are. Yeah, but conservatives aren't really like trying to like I, 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 Hang on, hang on. I understand that they are. But like my, mm -hmm. my question to you is, is that because of policies that Democrats have instituted or policies that conservatives have instituted? I, I'm not a... I'm like a full moderate. So I think it's both. I think that there is there is always room for both parties. I think that within any policy making and why I think I believe in democracy mm -hmm. so much is because men and women with equal voting power will decide on the best thing to do with society. I believe in the power of the sexes coming together and the power of, you know, masculine and feminine yin yang coming together. Um, I don't want you to think that for a second I'm like this crazy conservative, but I am like I, I just I'm very opposed to this like insane leftist agenda that I think only hurts women. So with the OnlyFans thing, I think what you were talking about earlier is like why I think women, like why I made the, um, why I said that women should get married earlier instead of doing OnlyFans. And it's basically just off of the principle of if you're a woman, you either consent to private ownership or public ownership. And so I think that private ownership is absolutely preferential to any woman um just in the like just for her health uh just for her safety and for the way that uh you know a country should should run generally i i don't know so a good way to look at it like, well, well, other people, but i would like to go back with you on this in a moment once it there was a pearl davis tweet recently where she was like i'm thinking that wives are just prostitutes and like a really popular quote tweet of just a picture of andrea dworkin was like yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I want to. I, yeah, I want to broaden this out. I want to get more people in. I want to give uh, Tuna a chance to get in here. I want to give uh, uh, Brittany a chance to get in here. I want to give uh, Rashad, and that's the order we're going to go in. So we're going to go Tuna. We're going to go Brittany. We're going to go Rashad. Go ahead, Tuna. Um. So this is all of these. The social changes aren't happening for no reason. They are adjustments to a shift in technological availability. Yes. We already talked about abortion, we talked about the pill, and all of those progressions are happening due to conservative private sector policies. So the way that we are running the country, the inventions we are making, the innovations that we are, are, are the, the way that we regulate business from the conservative end, from the Republican end, is going to make fundamental ripples in society that will be adjusted to socially. The Democrats then create their platform off of that. The Republicans have a fundamental contradiction inside of their platform, which is that they want to stymie capitalist progress, but they don't want to have the ripple effects happen. So either the Democrats are gonna have to be there like little maids cleaning up their messes, or the Republicans are gonna have to stop being capitalist. And that's why we're getting towards these like, 
people that are you know that's that's what third positionism is we're trying to get to such a such a level of like isolation don't take immigration in make it so that everybody's homeschooled America we're trying first. to create like a more simple do, uh, a simple way of living that's the do you consistency think third positionism is like even a little bit viable for one second in america do i think it's i uh, know well, i'm saying this I, is the this moderate is the moderate voter is 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 very much uh eating up the third positionism yes. right now um yes. so i think that the the highest turnout for voters has always been the middle um and so i think middle that shrinking will... though um in recent years along with this uh i think but i think i think it's only for a moment and i think after the whole trump if whatever shit dies down it will go back to normal wait a second though but there's uh, when he said third positionism i thought he meant like um and i'm not great at political philosophy guys okay so bear with me but like the um the third position between like the um western block of capitalism and the eastern block of communism yeah. as opposed to like bill clinton third way democrat like that's like a different thing in my mind, but where I thought you were referencing the like almost like Nosbol energy, where you're very conservative socially, but you're like pretty left wing, like pro family economically. Well, which I'm not even judging, but yeah, like, that what is, I'm talking about. Well, that, no, that is the moderate now, especially b because it's reactionary politics. So it's a reaction to both sides. So yeah, it's the uh, moderate or mass the, politic, as you would yeah. uh, get a lot of it. The classic Popular. ideas that people aren't thinking in terms of individual because they don't really feel like individuals anymore they feel like they are part of collective identities on the yeah. left you're going to get those collective identities from sort of like the disenfranchised and then on the opposite you have like oh we are patriots that are being left out of the political interest the democrats want to just fill us with you know we are getting to that position of mass mind okay, and I that wanna, is wanna... that is also the moderate voter yeah, even wanna, though yeah, there I... is no middle it's because everyone now looks like a mass mind. Well, we'll like the well, moderate I, voter hates the like rabidly left wing social person, but they also hate the like Romney Republican who's like, no, healthcare needs to be really fucking expensive. And it's like I they wanna, have those positions yeah. at the same time. I want to I want to toss the ball to Brittany for a minute um, and let her go. There's been a lot said. She can respond to what she likes. And then we're going to toss it to Rashad. Go ahead, Brittany. There is a deeply possible chance that I misunderstood the point of this panel a little bit because in my mind these are social issues and politics are a reflection of the social and long-lived history of like humans so like when I look at humans and I look at how we've evolved and where we've ended up and that we're living history I look at our wants and our desires I think fairy queen said it best like we don't have churches but the same people that say we need churches aren't going to church it's an option you can go no one's keeping you from going. So why aren't you going to church? Because we're in a deep meaning crisis, as uh, Verveke would say, John Verveke, right? And so when we are in a meaning crisis, it impacts our politics. It makes us less compassionate or more compassionate, depending on our needs being met. But we don't, know to, we don't know what we actually need, so we don't know how to vote. And then because we don't know how to vote, we vote with whatever feels right or sounds right. And then that is just like the society at large is a reflection of where we are, right? The majority dictates. Well, the majority of the world has decided this is how the world should be, so here we are. And the question is if we're really moving people in a way, why? And is it serving everybody? Because I hear a lot of people complaining, but they also, when they get things, aren't happy still. So I'll contend that women also aren't happy. But the problem is, is like, it's not about things. It's about a society that actually is going to work for them, a housing market that works for them, a job market that works for them, a family life that works for them. What and we're not getting that mean? right now. Well, what but, does that mean? Hold on, if I may interrogate this for a minute. What does that mean works for them? Like, uh... uh uh, a, a housing market, a job market. Uh, I don't, I forget the third thing you said. Yeah, uh. it's about, well, this is the complicated part that whether or not we're not going to acknowledge it or not, but the United States is not a society. It's a collection of societies all working together under a one banner. And all of those societies are screaming, we need to help society without ever acknowledging that like New York is not California or Texas. Kentucky is not the same as Illinois. So you can still like, you can argue all you want about who's society, but society is unique and diverse and i just think we keep calling like we need to help society and men which men the men in my bubble are fine <laughs> what's wrong with yours you know mm -hmm. but the men in my bubble know they're not ready to be husbands but also they still like tate and they want to be husband worthy so what's that about right or the ones that are religious are doing fine they have wives they have kids 
because they have a religious bubble. So I'm saying like people are fine if you accept that like you're on a journey and like this is what's happening. But then you're not fine if you are seeking some material value from the world. And that includes politics. Politics is like a material exchange of feeling good. I vote for this politician. He gives me this material exchange of good. And I'm saying that's fine. But like every society has a different need. And are we willing to accept that? Like Texas isn't California, right? Sure. Yeah. It's, are young men doing fine, fine though? If, if we're looking at the cultural changes that we're seeing, are young men doing fine when we look at who they're looking up to, the kind of media they're consuming? You know, are young men doing fine? Because I think we can all agree the male vote is kind of like drifting in the abyss. Like the, the conservative must admit have, that the I women are the more material ones. ones. It, no, we I must think... admit that the the women. I want to hear you. Rush liberal, liberal, for a minute. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll get to the, the women, women are mentally ill. That's an evergreen thing. We can always go back to that. But well, I no, but it's like literally we just keep talking about the men and like that super chatter referenced earlier we just keep fucking talking about the men keep fucking talking about the men and it's yeah. like all these papers we've brought up it says that women are changing the hardest the most the quickest also the papers say women have the most psychiatric issues and they have more psychiatric issues if they're liberal and also liberal men even have more psychiatric issues than conservative but women men also have that they just bottle it down and don't ever face themselves and then they shoot their family or themselves this when they lose ridiculous. their jobs or they abuse their wives <laughs> Look, mental health is real, oh, whether you're a Republican oh, or a Democrat. Oh, I was talking about the male vote drifting oh, in the void. God. Okay, okay, well, look. Yeah, I want to hear like, Rashad's oh, the, problem, the problem we are having is we want to have six different conversations about this topic to take it in six different directions, which is fine, but let's try. I'm going to try to take this one at a time. Um, let's, let's finish Rashad's point, and then we'll get to the mental illness, and then we'll get to the ridiculousness. Yeah, I want to talk about mental illness, too. But I was saying before we started talking about crazy folks is, can we agree that the young male vote is like drifting in the vote? Like conservatives don't have them tight. Liberals don't necessarily have them either. They're kind of like drifting and inactive politically. I want to understand because I want to bring it back to what we were talking about originally. What do you guys do? We just leave the male vote where it is. Is there any desire or impetus to? OK, he says, fuck yeah. Do we bring them toward us or do we kind of just leave them where they are? Because I would say ideologically, we kind of see what's happening within the young male Gen Z as a Gen Zer. I can see what's going on. I can see like where my demographic is culturally. Do we want to like. Do we are we basically gonna say they're never gonna turn out in any substantial numbers? So let's just leave I think, whatever's I think, going on alone. I think this speaks to what Brittany was saying earlier that we live in like kind of a purposeless society. And I think that men specifically with their own psychiatric evolutionary needs need purpose more than women do, because I think that women are more connected to a biological purpose, at least through our wombs, in a way that men just aren't. Um, so I think that like I think a huge part of why men are like directionless is because of like just the throwing away of Christian secularism. Um, so I need. I think that men need to like a new. I think part of why they love Andrew Tate is because men have this like need to be soldiers. Like they have this. They're like workhorses. I say this a lot as a joke, but it is um, true. I disagree. I disagree. I what do you What do you disagree about? Away. The martyr, the martyr myth as this aesthetic thing to aspire to. Um, excuse is me, I'm talking to by empire. I'm it's talking to Rashad. It's not something that's innate in the body. Oh, that's a man, speaking that's, over that's, that's on the, the first state. day of Black History Month, Tuna. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna. That you know what? I'm gonna crazy. do not not over the okay, okay, okay. person on the panel, Lavloon. Fucking shut the fuck up, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. The the idea of sending men to war and this idea that men fantasize about dying for their wife yeah, and child, that's an empire-born no. thing. It's I'm not in the ego's this. life. No, I I'm don't think... talking about this. I'm talking about they need purpose. They need to be kept busy. I don't think... I don't think, I don't think it's like a, they need to be put to fucking war. That's like a stupid... But I think that they do need to be kept busy in a way that women do not need to be... There's, a, there's such thing as male genius and male madness that women seem to not show. And women are high in eroticism, but it doesn't have as... What's the uh, difference between men and women and male men? Women cry and go to a psych ward, men shoot up a school. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Male violence back, and male madness is more consequential for society. I want to push back on your reasoning for men fucking with Andrew Tate. Like, I think a much more statistically and quantitatively more accurate explanation would probably be like men's lack of success romantically and socially. It's probably a bigger motivation for fucking with Tate than but wanting to be a soldier. Another as reason. Who, hold on. As someone who went to go be a soldier at one point, didn't work out, but it is what it is. Um, oh, no. I was surrounded by a bunch of young like you kids. Die, King. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was surrounded by a bunch of other young 18 <laughs> February. 
<laughs> okay. I'll, t- I'll take it off. I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, pause. Anyways, um, I think a lot, I, as someone who's been around a whole bunch of young men who all signed up to kill, like we all went infantry like 2018, 2019. I didn't like, I don't think that any of the young men there were like oozing this just strong desire to just yeah. be soldiers. So even amongst the ones no, who I, I'm, not, I'm, not like, I'm not saying soldiers, I'm not saying soldiers in the sense of war. Let me let me at least go back well, and clarify. Okay, if you're going off on a tangent of something I don't Hold mean, I want to save me, you the time. Let me get my shit off. Is okay. I'm saying that even amongst the young men who probably are more inclined to want to commit acts of violence, even if it's legally, you know, allowed, like being in the military, even those young men weren't too like wild like wild and ready to go so what i'm saying is amongst normal young men i think their desire is not rooted in a in a desire to be like super duper tough or super duper goonish i don't I think, think so either want, i i think what they want is mm-hmm. to simply be successful with women and i think and i think there's say, three things that they want there's three things that they want okay let me they want to be, they they want to be people, people, people might your people might push back on what i'm about to say but i think that young men's main appeal to andrew tate besides the bugattis and the fitness and all that bullshit is the advice on how to get women no. and i think that no. he's the only per- oh yeah 100 no. percent. there's I three think- things there's three things can i say them okay, talk, talk your shit. one is camaraderie with brothers so it's it's brotherhood because men thrive off of camaraderie with their brothers. Another one is uh, keeping busy, just having your mind occupied. And the third one is access to women, of course. Uh, so that's what I mean by soldier, because not not uh, being a soldier is not just uh, killing, right? It's keeping your mind busy, also camaraderie with brothers, and then also when you come home, you get your pick of the litter, right? You are, right. You, are now, you are now a man with purpose, you are now a man who has more job opportunity because you're a veteran in a lot of cases, or at least this was the case after World War II, um, or World War One especially. Uh, and so that's that's what I mean, is that men want need to be more occupied. And what we see is that even though men have jobs, they are severely underemployed. They have too much time on their hands. They don't have as many hobbies. There's, there's not as much brotherhood. People Men have less friends than ever before. Now men are working from home in hordes, so they have less camaraderie at the workplace. Also, we have mass immigration, so there's a lot of jobs that are that are being taken that, uh, you know, primarily American men would have take would have taken that are now being, uh, you know, given to people who are not from here. Um, so there are there are multiple there are multiple issues. I'm not just saying like, men want to kill. Sure, I wanna I wanna. Okay, I'm gonna throw a flag on the play here, um, because I think that <laughs> this is this is one of the more difficult uh, ones to wrangle here. I'm going to confess. I would argue we're kind of where we need to be for, with this discussion. We're getting into like the cultural, um, like I would say so. We're kind of like getting into the we got into the political and like you know like analytical weeds of it, but now we're getting into the more like meta. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? Go for it, brother. Okay, well, brother. far be it from me. What? Microaggression. Yeah, what? put that on the shelf, <laughs> motherfucker. What? Okay, if I feel like about brotherhood. Like no, and as no, a fellow is, veteran, okay, Wick that's is, what I mean by Wick brother. Is an official brother on the first day. Of a, ve- a veteran of the yeah, streets. Is that what you're trying to say right now, Wick? No, uh, uh, he mm-hmm. he was in the military apparently, and we're brothers. I know, I know. I'll keep going, keep going. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think. Uh, do we think that men are underemployed? Yeah. Are they not? What, you, what, yeah, what is what is I mean by underemployed? I mean they don't have a challenging enough job. Okay, so you think that they're not being challenged enough in their jobs? Yeah. Sure, maybe, but doesn't that have to do with just like we have m- fewer jobs like in the complicated, <laughs> fewer complicated jobs now than ever, and more like because manual of technological labor now than ever? because of yeah che- technological progress. Um, yeah, I think that that's certainly a case, which is why I think that te- we've talked about this before, me and you, is why technological progressivism will be very consequential to men, especially. Um, yeah, but yeah. the the way that the way that that pans out and the frustrations, they they tend to just make it so that men like find something in their personal creative sphere, something that they do individually that like keeps them distracted. Is that actually bad? Hobbies, like, like I said, hobbies. But men aren't aren't taking hobbies anymore. There's less brotherhood bad. than ever before. Okay. I don't know if I buy that. I okay. think that men, I wanna, feel, okay. men report being l- I so lonely. Like, I don't know what That's you mean. Not, you don't we get have hobbies. Let Wig get in. Let Wig get in. Let get in. I'm, I'm resetting. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Wick, I think please. we are going down a rabbit hole that might not be productive. So I want to I want to address what Allison says, right? Because Allison made a very, very good point when she said that the data shows, right? Men moving, they're still moving, right? But the, the movement is far, far less 
than women. Women are spiking when it comes to their radicalization, to going more and more extreme. Yes, right? social They're contagion way. Speaking, mm-hmm. Right? It, I, I don't... Is that it? Is that simply it? It's just social contagion? Women are so... Women are so predisposed to fall for social contagion that it should be genuinely... There should be legislation against it. I think so. So, so a couple of things. So, I want to pop what in here. Funny. What you, I, I want to know what is funny. funny. You got this real shit going on, like abortion rights, and you're just kind of like minimizing the fact that that just got like okay. Okay. So, because it, when I, we I talk about extreme, extreme leftism, okay, okay, it's not earlier, just abortion earlier, rights. Earlier, 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 When we talk about extreme leftism and why women are going up, 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 up to a crazy level, we're not talking about the moderate decision or like the moderate democratic decision to legalize abortion, to legalize birth control. We're thinking about the crazy postmodernist shit that is social contagion and that's fucking it. So... So you... So, it's not uh, when you think it's not like oh there's crazy stuff on the table. Yes, it has always been the case that there are moderate voters. The what why the why on um, why now people are not just wanting access to abortion but like sixty other things is social contagion and also what social media is doing to our fucking brains. Okay, so Wait, wait, go ahead. Okay, so a couple of things. So I would agree with what you and what Allison said that it is true that like rates of mental health, like especially in how it's affecting women. Um, are extremely poor and, are, are, and have it, clearly like women's mental health are suffering. Like we can find numerous examples of this. One of the examples is like not merely that women are self-reporting like higher rates of depression and anxiety, but they're more likely to be admitted into hospital, to be hospitalized for attempted suicide. Like that's one of the clearest examples and clearest signs of that, right? But I'm not sure like there's sort of a weird thing that we're doing when we're saying, first of all, that the population of people that is suffering like from mental health is also like becoming therefore more and more liberal. Is it because there's like, I'm not really sure like how these lines connect, right? Are you saying that like women like are tend to be more liberal because of the fact they tend to skew, we have suffer more from mental illnesses, or are you saying, or is it the reverse of that? That people, women who tend to be more liberal, are simply more likely to be mentally ill. Are you just stating a correlation? Are you trying to like, what connective tissue exists between these two dots? Is what I'm asking. Well, it's extremism. Not you, so Lav. The other white woman. Ways. Just kidding. <laughs> the other one. I wanted to hear from her. I there's a paper called The Politics of Depression, Diverging Trends and Internalizing Symptoms Among US Adolescents by Political Beliefs. And they basically said um, of internalizing symptoms of people acting depressed and neurotic and just like generally unwell, liberal women are killing it. Okay, they are just killing it in terms of mental instability. They are so good at being mentally ill. And then behind them are liberal men, and then behind them are conservative women, and then holding down the fort most mentally stable are conservative men. There is like a lefty sympathetic argument that says, well, the liberals are more likely to seek out mental health care. They're more likely to be in touch with their emotions. They're more likely to know that they're mentally unwell. Right wingers are more likely to like silently like sit there and marinate in their own mental illness and then like fucking snap and do some crazy shit. So, I mean, well, I don't speaking know. of crazy shit, you guys hear about the guy who cut off his father's head, went on a rant. Put on that is mental so. health. That is a mental right. health crisis. Mm-hmm. Anyway, carry on. A, a, a uh, guy I'll has a hobby. I have this paper in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Allison, I have a question. Like, so I've seen some statistics regarding like differences between when between conservatives and between liberals. And one of them is that conservatives tend to be taller. They tend to be physically more attractive. They tend to be more likely to go to the gym. All of those those things also tend to be true. Um, I am not sure, but I would just ask you: Is there any data to suggest that if you tend to be a liberal woman, that you're more likely to have experienced assault or more likely to have experienced some form of violence in your life? I think I, I have seen one. I would bet that that's true. I don't know if it, I don't know if there's like papers to suggest mm-hmm. that it's true or not. But I personally know a lot of women who like had um, like sexually traumatic experiences or like sexually nev- negative experiences, and then they were kind of like really radicalized by that. They like really projected their own personal life onto like national politics. Like I know people who watched the Kavanaugh hearings through and through. Mm-hmm. That was a five-hour proceeding. They watched it from the start and they watch it. Again, and and every time a Republican tweeted about how like she's a lying whore, how could you not remember every single detail of their rape? They were like going fucking crazy. Like, 
I know specifically from college, like many female friends who like probably were pushed further left by like Mm -hmm. their own sexually traumatic experiences and like seeing right, which I'm also from the South. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like there were like a lot of right wing posts on all of our social media pages about yes, from the South (laughs) about like, um, just like right wing sympathetic positions. And even if you are yourself right wing sympathetic, like there were some really insensitive posts from right wingers about sexual violence that I think like really turned a lot of women away. Mm -hmm. And there will be conservative men who are like, this is just women like voting based on their emotions because they're chaotic. Like, why are you projecting your own fucking baggage onto national politics? That's unhealthy. Well, that's that. But specifically, that is what I wanted to narrow in on. Right. And that's why I wanted to ask specifically about trauma, specifically about like violent instances that may have happened to you. Because when we're saying like the way Unfortunately, like when you say, and it is true that like liberal women are more likely to suffer from mental illnesses, what that makes it sound like, like to the average person listening is the reason like why if you are a woman and if you're liberal, it's it's because of the fact that you suffer from a mental illness or because you're, which is the mm-hmm. danger of saying that what I want to say and the point of view also. That out is that it might be the case that if you are a liberal woman and if you are voting for these more liberal policies, it might be because you think that those liberal policies might address something that has happened to you, systemic problems that you have faced and discrim- aspects of discrimination that you've faced in your life. And that might be the reason like, why you're more I, likely to vote. I want, I want to discuss that, but I'm also curious because I have heard the argument um, that the left courts mental illness in a way that the right does not. Like the left encourages you to identify with your mental illness like uh, mm. it's not Listen, that you just have adhd or it's not that you just have autism you're autistic right um and and i i'm, I'm sympathetic to that argument but i want to hear mm. for pros because i'm not sold on it i also want to also address right the idea that the again the, the more self-reliance that is uh pushed by the right might again lead to people who otherwise would have mental issues getting better at least a, a little we, bit, right? Not we are talking mental. about like social spheres that like expose you to more traumatic instances when we talk about the left. We are talking like exactly. we are talking about people who are constantly posting videos of people being murdered, people that are having casual sex and then yeah. feeling raped afterwards. We are talking like I mean, look at how much the DSA was spending on their fucking sexual assault budget. It's insane how much the social climate is about exposing yourself to adverse experience versus the conservative. It's not even necessary that liberal people are worse people. It's more so that liberal people, by being more open-minded and more open to new experiences, expose themselves to both more positive and more negative experiences. And especially and, women. Yeah, especially women. It's women really, have really way more to lose. It's important yeah. as a liberal woman to be like uh, like a sort of cosmopolitan culturally in all ways that you can. I care about nuclear arms. I know a woman who every night, it might not be true anymore. It's an ex. Every night woke up from a nightmare about nuclear war. And she lives in like the, probably one of the safest places from nuclear war of all time. We're not talking about someone living in Afghanistan. And it's just like, she every day wakes up. Wait, did you just say mom? I said Vermont. Vermont. Yeah, yeah, Vermont. That feels, so like, that feels like the safest place from a nuclear war. Uh, it was, uh, if, uh, she, Philadelphia, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm saying the United States. Like That's not that we, safe. We that have, is the end. That is the end of her life. That is the end. <laughs> if anything else, that would be the end. Shit. Oh, oh if, 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 uh, if a nuclear warhead hit Philadelphia or something here. Like what i'm saying is yeah. like you don't live in a war zone you should move not a nuclear war zone <laughs> at least mm-hmm. well let, let me just say you know we're, we're calling for a ceasefire in philadelphia but no she's sure. not like in the gaza fucking strip yet that's what she wakes up to every night her body kind of like the gaza strip over there. by the concept Okay. But yeah, I, I would I would agree with you that like especially liberal women, I think are living in Mary Harrington and Louise Perry, who are both feminist writers, make the case that a lot of women are so unhappy because we're living unnaturally and living uh, like liberal, like liberally and with this progressive mindset of 
uh, libertarianism is like diametrically opposed to uh, women's interests and has always been. Um, so I think that that's. I want to respond to that actually, and then specifically like tie this back to something you said earlier. And that was the idea that like it's better for like young girls, so girls who are 18, to choose to get married as opposed to get OnlyFans. And I would agree with you in a vacuum. That's probably mm -hmm. true, right? Yeah. But life is not a vacuum, right? Like, why not tell that girl, for instance, to focus on like her education? Why not tell her to focus on her career? Well, even when she gets married and has a career, she's still going to crave marriage and have children because that is what women want. Uh, so we, there's this new like liberal feminist thing where women are like telling women to oppose their fundamental nature and the things that they have always wanted. Um, okay. And I don't get it. I don't get can it. I women, ask, I, women on average, don't want to have the careers that men have. We don't I, can, have I, this, I, the same things. The same things don't drive us. I, I can give you an answer to that, though. Like, let me ask you something, okay? So, suppose like you do have the girl in the vacuum that does choose to get married at eighteen, right? Sure. Um, like there are, the, I've seen plenty of statistics that show that girls that statistically get married at younger ages, that have children at younger ages, specifically eighteen and nineteen and twenty, they're more likely to be divorced. They're more likely to have multiple marriages. They are more likely to become sure. But when we're when we're comparing these two things, or which the only things in that I was comparing to, before. in a vacuum, yeah, in the vacuum, they are more way more likely to kill themselves if they go into sex work. They're more likely to be mentally ill. They're way more likely to be unhappy. In so vacuum, in that vacuum, if yeah. So it's a vacuum, sure, but you're not, you're not you're not to the general public to get married or not. I would say wait until you are 25 until your brain is developed. But if okay, you have but, the but, choice, but, but, okay, I, I, I'll tell you like, why I'm. I'll tell you why I'm humping. I'm on this specific humping. point, right? Because, yes, actually. <laughs> so the reason, like, why I'm thumping on this particular point is, yeah. and I hear this from a lot of people specifically, and I'm sure you were even on one of these podcasts who specifically say that like women should focus should not focus on their careers, they should not focus on their education. They should focus on becoming married. They should focus on getting married as quickly as possible. So this is ridiculous. I think that we the, the evidence shows that women are the happiest when they have a job and they can take care of their children. So these are things like, uh, you know, part time jobs or a focus on a um, on a hobby that's making money or having some sort of financial independence away from your husband. But also that isn't necessarily like a high power job. So it's something where you can still keep half an eye on your children as you're as you're raising them. Um, this is just what women want. Women are the happiest doing this. Uh, so to be like, no, you need to get an education. You need to be a girl boss. You need to focus on these things. It's women are just not happy that way. We just well, never have them. Well, but I'll, I'll give you the reason like, why I think that's important. And the reason like why that's important is because, because of your children. Woman. It is because of your children. So I, this is a problem that I often have, like not with you necessarily, but with other people who have touted this type of type of rhetoric before. Which is that, like, it's perfect in a vacuum, right? Assuming that your husband never dies, assuming that he never loses his job, assuming that you, but oftentimes in many marriages, it is assuming that you never get divorced, right? Sure, right? It is okay just to have like a simple side gig that you can just do on the side. It's just something you sort of keep an eye on just to sort of keep yourself busy, right? The problem well, not the just, I said financial independence also. Like, you want well, to have. Good. To be fair, that that, that to be and fair, and also that's why I vote for social programs. That's why I call myself a feminist for things that happen like this. Like if your husband beats you or if he dies, women should have a fallback program. Right, but that is like specifically the problem that I have often, like with with uh, many people who are conservative, who tilt conservative, and who advocate for women to get married at younger ages and to not focus on their education or their career. I, it sets you up. To I would. I yeah, I would agree. Don't get married until you're twenty-five. Like, well, wanna... it's not. Just, yeah, finish your point, but then I want to hear from Brittany on this specific thing. Like, do do, do women just want to get married? Is that the thing, right? And, Wait, uh, hold on. I didn't say that women want to pair bond with one person. Women crave monogamy. They also crave children. They want children. Sure. And they also want jobs. It's not just, the, it's just jobs, not monogamy one thing. Children. I'm curious what Allison yes. and Brittany have to say on those. But finish your point, Fairy Queen, and then I want to hear if that's what... Um, Allison and Brittany. I wanted to, uh, this is, an, I don't think that Lav is necessarily saying this, but I have heard people who tilt more conservative who are saying that the left is ruining women, right? And I feel frustrated by that because oftentimes I think that many of these conservative men in particular are really asking like women to, pro women to prioritize their sex lives with them over the well-being and preservation of their children. They care more about you playing the submissive little trad wife that doesn't work and dresses up and walks around as opposed 
opposed to making sure that your kids have their college tuition like funded, making yeah. sure that you have something stuck stuck away for a rainy day. When you as a woman do not prioritize your education, you don't prioritize your career, you do nothing like that and you do choose to just get married quick and you do whatever it is your husband has to say and you choose not to take any sort of dominance within that marriage, you are not just screwing over yourself, you are screwing over your children and throwing them under the bus. In order for you to be a good mother, you have to be an empowered mother. And that means that you do have to focus on your career and developing your and focusing on your education. Okay. Uh, To Brittany and then to Allison. And then I know we're reaching that time. I want to give everyone an option to leave, but I know we have callers, and if people want to stay, we'll probably go for a little bit longer. But I want to hear from Brittany, Allison, and then we'll get to closing. Go ahead. Um, So I don't believe, like, any group is a monolith. I think humans are diverse and unique, and I think we can generalize, but I think that does a great disservice to caring for people's needs, and I think a lot of people will get neglected with that method. So as things change... People will have different needs and wants. And so I think holding on to this idea that there will never be a different need or want, even through the evolutionary process of like women creating new babies, I think is sort of neglecting sort of like social changes or a reflection of so much more than just what you're watching on TV, especially when they're happening to mass groups of people. And so for me, I'm not sure that I could say like women want babies. I could say some women want babies and that's great. You should do that. But you should also do it with somebody who loves you and you should do it with somebody that you're committed to and you should do it with somebody who isn't going to abuse you or your offspring. And that is much harder to come by than we're led to believe. And I think that's the dilemma a lot of women are facing. So it is better, obviously, to be single and not procreate. Same with men. It is better that men are not choosing women who will cheat on them or women who will leave them or women that will abuse their finances or anything like that as well. So I personally struggle with this question because I just can't downgrade humans down to this generalization but i appreciate that input from people as they've always used that as a way to help society and i don't really see it helping so if you want to keep it up go ahead allison um yeah i mean like just on the louise perry slash um the oh what's her name mary harrington feminism against progress okay i have that book Mm -hmm. so i'm like I'm sympathetic to what they say. I also think they veer a little too hard sometimes into like, I mean, they don't outright say this, but sometimes they basically outright say like, it would be better to be in like a loveless, like boring ass fucking marriage to be alone, like than to be alone, like basically settle women. Like you really would rather be in like a boring ass fucking, like, like kind of troublesome marriage than you would to like be by yourself. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, I don't know. Cause for me, I'm like, Oh, that sounds terrible. But then I'm like, but I'm working off the assumption that like a good marriage is an option, right? Like maybe if I knew that a good marriage wasn't an option, like, I don't know. I like to think that I would like prefer to be alone, but I like might not. I like might wish to like be kind of mildly annoyed with somebody, but still just to have them. I don't know. I like don't know if that's true or not. I think a lot of people do settle. I do. I think a lot of people choose that option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like. Hard to do life alone. Yeah. Well, especially if you don't have family or aunties or uncles. Like, I'm really blessed that way, right? I come from a Iraqi background. Everyone has family, right? All my co- I got, like, 80 first cousins. So I'm really lucky. But not everybody has that. And so I wonder, like, you know, is that going into it as well? Are we t- paying attention to people of color and how they're often religious and they are procreating at a faster rate? So maybe white people need to figure out their family priorities. Well, this is why we're going to have AI companions in the future. And uh, we can be not alone but alone at the same time. Gang. Um, I want to respect everyone. So, uh, th- hold on, hold on. The idea that it's settling to uh, to have a partner that you're comfortable with, rather than especially into your 70s and 80s, rather than having like crazy like sex relationship with, is Whoa, this new? It's that? it's like this. Well, it's this who new. That? We're but, talking about the, values, girl. Settling but, means you're no, settling on way, values. It's the way that. No, that's not the way that uh, Allison framed it. But oh, the way that you were. It? No, she said it, mildly I, annoyed with. Didn't well, really Allison's like. Was ideal. We just ask her. I mean, that's. Yeah, I just meant like somebody you know, this is not your optimal partner. If you had it your way, you would date somebody with like notably different qualities. But they're so, sure. willing to date you. But, they're yeah, here, a, relation- a relationship down. ultimately is a choice. There is this new like after, especially after Disney, you know, princesses that your life is going to look in a, a certain way. And it's almost never the case sometimes. And I don't know if you've been around a lot of old couples. 
they're very grumpy with each other, but there is still that love, that partnership, that devotion to each other that comes after you you choose each other every day for 50 plus years. And it doesn't look the same as meeting someone and falling in love and constantly having sex and, and doing whatever. It just starts to look different. Yeah, I don't know why you're bringing sex into it. I feel like settling is about values ultimately, right? Like if you love someone, you don't care if you can have sex with them for the rest of their life. It's about companionship and loving Yes, but I, but I I was correlating sex to passion and correlating passion to oh. excitement. So. Oh. Hmm. It, this is kind of an, an age-old problem um, with relationships in general, but uh, that's almost another topic. And again, uh, we're not ending the stream, but I do want to give a, a chance to everyone to close out, sell themselves, uh, or... <laughs> promote themselves let's let's be clear uh and uh if they need to go they need to go we have some callers they can bring in um that's fine um gang uh it has been great if you've liked this content hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're watching this on youtube if you're watching this on twitch or on kick hit that follow button uh always helps always supports me tomorrow tomorrow's stream is going to be very early it's going to be 2 p.m eastern and uh we're going to have no opinion and destiny and they're going to be talking geopolitics. And uh, it should be kind of a casual, uh, fun, lighthearted conversation. I don't think it's going to be blood sports. It might. Uh, but tune in for that. Should be something. You guys still different. beating the Israel dead horse? Oh, always, right? It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, uh, you guys are going to find a way to stop it. You yeah, guys are going to find a way. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I want to give everyone here a chance to, to shout themselves out, tell people where they can find them. We're going to start with Rashad, and we're going to work our way around. Go ahead, Rashad. All right, my name is Rashad Crenshaw. You can find me on YouTube. Just type in my name, Rashad Crenshaw. You can find me, all my links and shit on the videos. Uh, and that's it, man. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Rashad. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, go ahead, Lav. Uh, hi, I'm Lav. I go by Femoid, Sigma, uh, Sigma Femoid, Lav Loon. Uh, you can find me wherever. I'm going to start putting out more video essays because I want to do that because I'm bored. I have too much time on my hands. My husband makes too much money. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah, you can find me there. First world problems, but it's okay. <laughs> we like we like that you spend some of our time with us. Thank you for being here. Two and chips, go ahead. What's up? Thanks for having me on, Wick. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on Twitch. Just follow me on Twitch. Follow me on fucking YouTube. That's that's it. What's your Tuna name? TV. What's my tuna chip? Tuna or... chip. My audience really likes you, so they're like, "Who is this guy oh, with the glasses?" Well, get him over here. Tuna chip, guys. Tuna chip. You need, you need a haircut. You need a haircut bad. I know. Don't even get me fucking started. Don't trust your girlfriend to fulfill the promise of cutting your hair. Not in 2024. I've been cutting Connor's hair for five years straight. That would be a so, that would be an interesting segment. Lab, rate your drip, right? We have Lav on. Then the men in my audience come in, and Lav just basically tells them what's wrong with them. That would be fun. Uh, we might do that one time. Uh, Fairy Queen, though, go ahead. Hey guys. Um, thank you so much for listening to me tonight. Um, you can find me at Fairy Queen's Cottage on YouTube. And you can also find me um, at Fairy Triple Underscore Queen on Twitter. I've just dropped my uh, YouTube in the Twitch chat. And I'll drop my Twitter there too. Thank you so much. Oh, go check her out, gang. She's great. Uh, Brittany Simon, go ahead. Uh, Brittany Simon on YouTube. Uh, Rashad, I really wanted to hear more from you. Actually, would be interested in collabing if you're open to it. I think we could have some good discussions. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Cool, cool, cool. Building bridges, making connections. We love to see it. Cross pollination. It works. Thank you for being here, Brittany. Really appreciate you. And last but certainly not least, um, someone who is uh, very excited to be here uh, until she actually got here. And then I'm not sure if she's so excited. But go ahead, Allison. No, I've had fun. Um, yeah, I don't stream. I'm just a random person here right now. So. <laughs> oh, it's thank you nice. for being here, Allison. Like I said, if you need to go, I understand. If not, uh, stick around. There's some callers in the waiting room who have been DMing me that they want to yell at all of you. Um, and so we'll bring them on probably one at a time for a few minutes and we'll kick them off when they're boring. Uh, so let's bring on uh, the one who actually paid me money first. Um, <laughs> Artemis Val, you are live. What do you got? Uh, shouldn't you brought on the uh, the person that actually... Like I said, you paid me money you? first. And so uh, I don't... Look, I'm going to prioritize money. <laughs> Uh, okay. Today. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so everybody, uh, the left should listen to everybody but Lav. Uh, I need you guys to keep doing what you're doing uh, because you guys are woefully unpersuasive, except for Brittany, somewhat. Um, everything you guys have done so far has only sh reinforced my idea that you guys don't understand men's problems or why they're doing what they're doing. 
Um, th- this is this is why they're like the the Democrats have lost support. And don't even care about men because they don't know how to address men. They don't understand men. They don't do anything for men. Um, what do you think men need? Oh, they need a purpose. You you were right. Uh, you and I think Brittany may have said it too. But men fundamentally are seeking purpose in their life, and that that comes out in many ways. Um, all you've done is lecture men tonight on why they need not listen to Andrew Tate, even though Andrew Tate is providing a quote-unquote purpose. Who is lecturing against Andrew Tate? Um, well, people who keep bringing up Andrew Tate for some reason in this conversation about... I didn't hear anyone. I didn't hear anyone lecture against it. I mentioned well, I, Andrew Tate a few times. Yeah, I will say, like, I agree with you. I do think everyone needs purpose. I think everyone yes. wants to be a servant in a good and healthy way, not a bad way. Like, we want to yeah. serve our communities, whether men or women or non-binary people. We all want to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, dogs want to serve. Animals want to serve. We're animals. So, like, we want to serve. I just think it's about finding the right way to serve, right? Yeah, but you, you also have to find the right way to serve that is in line with your instinctual nature <laughs> and not try to rewrite human psychology to fit an, a non-natural state. Uh, I yes. don't know if I believe that because I think everything we do is nature because we are nature. It's like the butterfly no. only does what is within nature. So as do humans I, do only. What I, is within I, the I, nature. I'm going to go look back at the Soviet Union and you know, how they tried to change the way people behave. And then that did not work out. Yeah. My so, only- but we know people my- change. It's just like the fundamentals, but they change well, over time slowly. Like we are literally evolved. They, so they, like- they change. They change naturally with their instinctual nature. They don't change fundamentally to go, I need you to stop being the way you are and do this entirely different thing. I agree with you. No, no, no. That's why I say like men need to tell us what they need and we need to listen mm-hmm. to that because like I can't read your mind, but also I don't expect them to change overnight, which means that because of that, there is going to be a moment of conflict and pain in that growth spurt. Like yeah. people are going to get, well, it, they collected. The, yeah, yeah. Usually when people have like pain in their mind, that's usually cognitive dissonance. That's not like growth period. That, oh, that, I would really disagree. Is. I would say a, a meeting crisis is. Let me hear Tuna. He's obviously got some issues here. No, I, would, I, I want to let Brittany. Hold on, I want to let Brittany finish if, if she has more to say. But then I, I obviously I, does have issues. And then I want to. I want to. I want to <laughs> allow the people that you have called out. Oh, I I have a lot time. more if you guys have the time, but we'll take, I know you don't. We'll take it one at a time. We'll take it one yep, time. But I want to give them a chance. The ones you called out to respond mm-hmm. to you while you're here before you go but Brittany, finish your point then we'll go to tuna rashad fairy queen and allison yeah um i would just say like regardless of gender like nature is what is and so i think fighting your desire to change is fighting your nature desiring like fighting the consistency is fighting your nature i just think we're always fighting our nature and the question is how do we move within it like a riptide when you're stuck in the ocean how do you move with it until you get out and i just think that is so specific to the individual that's it Hey, Tuna, why have you been lecturing men all night? Why have you been failing men? Go ahead. I haven't been lecturing men at all. The thing I want to push up against is this idea that people have an immune nature or an innate nature that is immutable and is it, people follow incentives. That's why behavior changes. We do have desires. We do have like a, a, a but we're mostly responding to environmental incentives when we're making these like political decisions. Obviously, we have a start point and an end point and someone creates some kind of like shit in the middle. But like, why are women voting more right now? Why are women voting the way that they're doing? There's an incentive to. Yeah. It's going to uh, make them more independent. It's going to make them have more money. Women, women will choose to be more free than happy. Just like mm-hmm. men. Everybody, as long as you create the cor- correct maze. So why are we talking about this like... like it's uh, progress. Okay. Progress so you're only progress. you're only talking about unmarried women. Every other demographic of male and female who are married or unmarried vote conservative. I don't know why you're saying all women are a monolith. That is not how that works. That's not what I said. I, I understand, saying, but you're saying I, you want to be they want to be free instead of other things. That 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 really only applies to unmarried women. Married women what are more of women are unmarried right now. About what was it like? 55, 56%. I'm I think. married. A majority of women. I understand. So we're, and, and also, like, the younger generation and all the married ones are dying and they're probably yeah. going to be athletic. Like, we're, and we're importing a whole bunch of women that are not married. We're talking, like, like we are looking at a changing demographic with changing incentives. I think the, the I think the changing demographic is not what you're actually expecting because uh, right now Gen Z is looking at millennials who were force fed all of this uh, progressive stuff and going, wow, their lives are entirely shit and destroyed. They have no future. I don't want to be anything like that, which is why they're slightly more conservative now 
than the millennials are in mo- many areas. Hey, I want to give uh, I'm, other people a I'm chance to respond. I want to go to uh, I want to go to Rashad, and I want to go to Fairbairn, yep. and I want to go to Allison. That's the, the order we're going to go to. Go ahead. Yeah, my only issue with this conversation we've had is that the conclusion we kind of came to as it pertains to the literal topic, because I know we went to all different types of yep. planets and galaxies and shit. Um, my main issue is the fact that we kind of came away from the conversation saying, yeah, the male vote's kind of like in the abyss, and fuck it. Who cares? Like, it is what it is. And I think that... um. At least from a more from like a, from an empathetic or maybe moral perspective, I do no, think we that give her something to believe in. Well, here's the thing: is that yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the problem is, young men are making it really obvious. Here are our current issues, and here are the people that are addressing it. And I think that we are kind of basically saying on this panel is that well, the young men aren't really turning out in the polls, so what's going on in their heads really isn't that big of a deal as as of right now. And I think that that's not necessarily the right way to look at it. Actually, I think that's a, a horrible way to look at it. Fuck that. And I, I want to push back on that because I feel like we should be trying to get in these guys' heads because I consumed red pill content in like 2019 when it was like normal. I was like, okay, advice on how to get women, the end. Then 2021, 2022 rolls around and it goes far deeper than just advice on women. It goes into conspiracy theory and genuine political opinions that are getting into the minds of young men. So what I'm saying is, I think the conclusion we came to in this conversation was kind of fucked in the sense of saying like, well, they're not at the poll, so fuck it. I don't know if that's the right way to look at it. Fair queen. That's exactly what I said. What I said is if you want to bring those men like this demographic of men, again, as I mentioned before, which is more likely to be middle class or lower middle class men, because these are honestly the types of men who are going to have enough times on their hands to be at home for long extended periods of times to be able to do what you what you've just mentioned, right? This particular group of men, you have to offer them a material thing from the Democratic Party for in order to get them to the booth, right? I know we're talking about like a sense of purpose materialize that for me. What does that mean? Right? Does that mean family? Does that mean marriage? What is it? And if you and if you are saying that that's what it is, okay, what's a policy that the Democratic Party can actually institute to push that, right? That's argue like, that we can't even offer that though. Like what like what are we gonna I, 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 I would argue that we can't because we can young, make marriage way more incentivized. We can well, make it young, way young more women are young women are yeah. young women are kind of showing what their choices like. Look, like we don't find a lot of these guys that attractive. Like the, like at least half of them, we're not really fucking with them. And the young men are kind of saying like, look, we're struggling with dating. Here are the things we give a fuck about. I don't think that the left should try to like appeal to marriage. I mean, we can promote it, but like. At, at, what what more can we do? Like we're not going to curtail women's freedom for the sake of like that's not what we that's not what we want to do. So what I'm saying is the clear battlefield right take now. Take away is the pill. Clear. We take away the pill. I don't think we should be doing any wild shit like. You can't take started. away the pill. Like I'm guess what? Now your joke. drug dealer selling the pill. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's not true. large. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You hold can on. just natural family plan. It's not like you need the pill to not be able to. But we're it. talking about offering young men tangibles, and I don't think that as it pertains to like, I guess like. We can put more funding into education. We can probably like fund fund programs to encourage young men to go get, you know, to become more educated. But I think the battlefield for young men's political incentives right now is more cultural than anything. I mean, what hard reason do young men really have to go to the voting booths right now? I don't see it. I don't think young men, even if there was one, well, I don't think there, I don't think young men see it. I think young men are mostly concerned about like cultural shit right now than anything legislative. Okay. If so, they don't want to go to the polls, then they don't matter. No, they don't want to go to polls. Don't for, that's, the don't know. Party. If they they don't want to go to the polls long term. That is no that reason. Is a good I thing think for them. every man needs to stop ingesting microplastics, get their testosterone checked. Wait, I have a question <laughs> for Ar- 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 Artemis. Ar- 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 Take Ar- Artemis. What's <laughs> your answer to that? Why men aren't going to the polls? Well, well, the reason that well, young men. Uh, like much of uh, young people don't nearly go to the polls as much as everybody else does. Um, but another thing is, is that young men don't have the time. I know somebody else said it. They're usually working more than 40 hours a week, especially the very young people who don't have the, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have to steal the socialist in here's argument here that they just don't have the capital to spend time learning all that shit. But the, the issue is, is that men don't actually care about anything outside of their town their city, their regional area. 
Because most people, 90% of the people, don't actually leave their states for their entire lives. So the people that are worried about these other, like, areas are the people who got, like, Tinder that are scanning fucking 200 miles away looking at other people. I'm sorry, like I can't. That, that can't possibly be the reason. So a couple of things. So the reason why that's not the reason is because like women vote more than men just generally across decades. Since They the also use more hospital services yep. than men. They also use more welfare. Yeah, yes. men, are gonna do that. Checked, men, well, men neglect themselves naturally, apparently. Well, hold, hold on. Men, men, just because yeah, they don't I mean, use their service don't doesn't it. mean that, yeah, yeah. The no, women, but men uh, literally, well, like, if we're going to generalize, especially yeah. old conservative men, I they we struggle don't. to go to the doctor. They struggle Wait, I thought we don't themselves. generalize. I thought everything was individualistic. It is, but in this conversation, Lav, I'm trying to join the it's bubble. whenever okay? it's useful. Oh, yeah. well, it, the bubble doesn't even matter. So the issue is that young men are not using these welfare services because they're, they're a lot faster at recovering from things. So like women will often go to the emergency room for uh, colds, stuff like that, to get checked out. Young men don't normally do that. Uh, as a person who is in the military, uh, the amount of sol women soldiers going to the fucking um, sick call is astronomical. Well, I mean, compared well, to they've you're, done you're modern like studies on this. I have four military brothers, but like they've done That's major nice. studies on this. Like... Okay, well, that's I'm nice. Just, just sharing, bro. Jeez, bro. Just the, the issue is, is that a lot of people. Before we do that, Artemis, like you're kind of making my point for me, right? right? Like the reason, like why, like women, and this is not just mm -hmm. it's not just because of Tinder, and we know that because of even the statistics that we can I can show you, like of women voting as opposed. To why are we literally neglecting biology when they keep talking about fucking nature? Well, then talk about women's biological nature. Like, what are we talking about? Women have to go to the hospital more. They experience pain on a more rapid, like, cycle. Their hormonal changes in chemistry are literally different than men. Like, men are working more. Women are working, like, two jobs. Like, we're all working. We're all fucking working. They're not listening to me right now. I've muted them. Like, they're not. Like, why are these people referencing science and then not using science or referencing data and then not using data or referencing, like, biological evolution and then not referencing biological evolution? Why are they referencing nature and then ignoring women's nature? I'm saying, like, what specific cool. tangibles for young men, like, as it pertains to, like, their main issues, romance, social, and economic issues, what can liberals, what can Democrats offer them tangibly in legislation? Adopt Christian secularism culturally. Well, This is well, the only thing. That's well, well, let's, talk, let's, talk, let's not talk about what men, what they can do for men. Let's talk about what they could stop doing that affects men. They could stop trying to import in millions of people through back doors to the fucking uh, southern border and then house them in fucking airports. Everybody can see that. It, it political, not politically, optically, that looks fucking bad. Especially when men are looking at, uh, let's say, uh, I got like a few things from like Baltimore where people are fucking pissed. But not even like just white people, but everybody is mad that they're fucking working 40 hours a week and yet people that are housed up in hotels on the government's dime. If you've ever talked to a legal Mexican immigrant, you know that they fucking hate illegals. They okay. hate Ar illegals. Ar Artemis, Artemis, mm -hmm. but my question to you is the same question that I posed to Rashad and to Tunaship and to yep. everyone here earlier, okay? Mm -hmm. the population of men, right, that yep. are struggling to get a date, that are spending a lot of time online, that are spending yep. a lot of time at home, right? They're probably more, you would agree with me, that's probably more likely to be a middle class or lower middle class man, right? Uh Bro, I'm so far away from the bubbles that talk about illegal immigration. Like, leave people alone. The, the issue is, is that because the the uh, the idea of forcing somebody to adopt a religious we value. You don't force that. You don't force them to adopt it. There are already things like, especially on social media, where uh, Christian secularism. I mean, people are very mad at this woman. Yeah. Her name's Nara Smith, mm -hmm. and. She Man, men are grumpy at women for taking their jobs and meaning. They're mad at brown people and immigrants for taking their meaning. Men need to get their shit together. But this is what should be done. We like that is what having this like you know making it cool to have a family and to be monogamous and to be all these things like that. That is the way that the left wins. That Hold is on, just the way. I gotta pull back on Barry real quick. Ar Artemis, Artemis, I want well, you. We're to gonna let Artemis go here soon, and I I do want to make sure Allison yeah. gets her word in. Yeah. So I'll, I'm sorry to cut this off, right? But uh, we have a line. So Allison. Yeah. Well, well, okay, so I, I oh, just want to say, Fairy Queen, every time you've said, like, well, women have re re real material conditions. They need these welfare programs. They need it. Um, there is, I'm from the South, okay, and I hear these conservative men in the back of my mind, and they're like, 
why is it men's fucking fault that we're more self-sufficient and we like don't need government money? Why mm -hmm. do we get punished for not being fucking leeches on society? Like why are women's problems taken more seriously because they need handouts more? Which is like, you could say, that's heartless. That is some heartless shit right there. But I mean, mm -hmm. you could say, no, it's not because somebody has to pay for these government programs. And it disproportionately, it's not women. <laughs> So, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sympathetic to all sides. I am really sympathetic. And like, I have opinions mm -hmm. about the family court process that like make conservative men so mad because I'm like, mm -hmm. we really just have to ruthlessly prioritize the best interests of the child. It's really not about the preferences of adults, right? That mm -hmm. means dads get dicked over sometimes. Like, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. it's just how it goes. So like, I am like, I am like feminist bleeding heart. Okay. I've got that in me, but I also have that like in the back of my mind, that conservative man voice. And they're like, mm -hmm. whispering yeah. in your ear, like <laughs> the, the dark angel on your shoulder. Yeah. Like, I so just wanted to like, oh, the sorry. natural, the natural last, conclusion of this, words, right? Will on, be... Last words, Artemis. And we're gonna bring in the next guy. Artemis. Sorry, on. Tuna. Thank you, Tuna. <laughs> so what, the answer what? is, um, what are all these social services that Democrats have put in to benefit men? Maybe, maybe in the last six months and a year has been different, but for the last 10 years, 20 years, what are all these social benefits for, say, college, hiring, um, promotions, stuff like that? What side has the Democratic Party been favoring and exclusively leaving out? Well, they already had it by default, bro. What do you want? What do you, what do you mean, what do I want? Like, what when do you you're want, really, bro? like, what kind of a retarded question is that? Well, you asked okay. the dumb question to begin with, bro. Like, think about what you fucking asked. You asked how did this thing go to the men in the first place? I'm going to look at the people that were just born 10 years ago, and you're telling me that child had everything? He already had that fucking degree? Are you kidding me? Why are you bringing up degrees as if, like, 99% of the American populace needs a degree? Why are you bringing it up? Like, it's a thing. I don't have, hold on, hold on. I'm going to make this very clear. I don't have a fucking what? degree. I'm an engineer. I make 160,000 a year. I, I love don't know why this bro. fucking question. Bring back trains. Bring back trades. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's the whole point. The the issue is that we have an entire party that has specifically outlined that it's going to benefit women and has pushed those policies. Mm -hmm. When the question is, what can Democrats do for men to show that they care about men so that they vote for them? I stated a thing they could do to signal they care about men, and then you went. Why? What does that mean? They already had everything. I don't fucking understand why you said that you asked that question. That is a fucking retarded statement. Well, you're asking as if the programs note, aren't already like available not. to men. They're not. Name me exclusively male only grants. Why do men need them when they've they Why do women need them? Well, they make women up have more been people disadvantaged over time and been neglected. Right now. Well, because we but haven't had anymore, but they're not Again. anymore. So should we stop female grants? No, we should get to a point in this society where gender doesn't matter. Jesus Christ. We actually just all take mushrooms and we live in a state of psychosis. I don't know why you keep bringing that up, Lav. Are you okay today? No, actually, I had <laughs> diarrhea all fucking day. But well, I girl, think you, you should retarded. get some water and go to bed. Your, your, your individualistic libertarian views are uh, it's not even libertarian. Nobody's happy. When I'm literally They're a progressive, but happy. also... Like, it's why nobody's happy. If it works you and helps you with your BPD slay, but giving uh, that prescription I, to the rest of the world is not I'm, good. You guys have been giving, not you guys, Lav has been giving prescriptions and I'm saying it's not going to be helpful to the new wave of modern women, but thank you for your contribution. That yes, is the no way benefiting women. The women who listen to you are unhappy, Brittany. No, They're that's unhappy. not true. Because this I'm happy to true. have, no, because uh, okay. I'm happy to have yeah, conservatives guys, and progressives live in the getting, same world. It's getting mad personal. It's kind of Holy derailed. Shit. It is you getting mad personal. Interesting. How to win over a constituency that already votes left. Why is it that every conversation has to end up, how can we help women more? How can we help? We're, we're literally talking about men not voting and you guys want more fucking male voters. Then, then the conversation always becomes about the women. Always. Be, how can women vote harder? How can they vote just even harder? Men, I'm just uh, going to come in and clarify. This was not a panel about uh, attracting disaffected male voters. This yeah. was a panel about why is the Gen Z disagreeing with each other Ooh. so much harder politically? Wait, did Wick send me a different message? I swear, Wick, you said the panel was about why do you think men and women are separately different ideology yeah. ideologically? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why, what the fuck why, was it about yeah. men for? <laughs> it would have been about both. Well, I'm, well, I think I think how we no, got I to men is the fact that we're, we're kind of. I would imagine we're all, we were letting Sean lead us because it's his month. 
Five dollars from artist style. Stop making me agree with the socialist. I will never stop making you agree. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, reset. Sorry. Let's reset. I don't. I don't. Look, <laughs> this has been a hard one. Let's perhaps get Joe in here. Maybe Joe can say something that will. Yeah, just to know. check, you can actually hear me, right? Yeah, well, I hear you. Yeah, we you do. Have. Okay, good, good, because I'm always a bit confused about how this thing works. I don't do enough panels to actually get a I, okay, get this I got you. Yeah. Let's skip that. Let's <laughs> I, okay. yeah, no, I, 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 I think I'm on the channel. No, I think I, I think I messaged you saying I was going to come in and yell at Lav, but um, Here we since go. I, I, <laughs> but since I, she came on, I've made a list of about. 40 different things so we're not going like to go pick your top pick yes. your top one okay let, let me just go on about the um i guess i'll bring up lewis perry and mary How harrington because um, i read through perry's book i actually do quite like her i think some of what she says is quite misleading but if i'm tearing up at a point you know i'm gonna give it a good review uh mary harrington no i i dropped that quite quickly and apologize for spending money on it but um yeah when it comes to my main issue it seems to me like a lot of what they argue for when it comes to this whole idea of like women being unhappy is fundamentally very anti-choice like one of the things i think louise perry pushes which i'm just very against is this idea that no fault divorce is a bad thing there's also this tendency to blame, um, like, here's something I want to bring up, because the last time I was on here, I tried to bring up negative aspects about women, but uh, nobody paid attention to it. Um, I think Go toxic asking. femininity is actually women being way too submissive and agreeable. I think that's what I would call toxic femininity. Like when we talk about women having bad sexual experiences, uncomfortable sexual experiences, I've been chatting to a woman called Jessica Pinn. You might know her as like the crazy clitoris lady, but I think she's got a lot of good points. You should try and get her on here. She sometime, has one right? and she talks about them. She's a queen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, I yeah. Think, and I I have to sort of some of what she says is quite cynical, but like, I have to agree part of it is women are just kind of quite uh, pathetic at voicing what they want. And I feel like this have is at least part of the problem. Have you listened to my show? Have you listened to this? Hold on, Joe. Have you listened to this panel at all? Um, I think any I of these women in like here have had, well, a, a The general what population is of yeah. women. I think that we are all probably outliers when it comes to women temperaments. <laughs> Look, the thing is... I, I feel like a lot of the problem women have with um, who are cynical about the whole sexual revolution and stuff like that is when you bring up stuff like the pill, it makes it so we can't say no to sex. No, you can just say no to sex. That is actually something you can yeah. do. You're not no, forced I, to have I hate sex to, I hate because to do you're this, on the but pill. I'm stuck on this. I, Lav, I think you're dead wrong. I think women have no problem. And I think this is evidence from their voting patterns as well. Women are very, very loud about what they want, right? They're, they're very, very loud about what they want um, across the board. The the outlier is the- No, the and actually Mary not. Harrington talks about this, is that there is a overarching group of highly intellectual, um, like very well-off women who are the loudest of the female group, but not necessarily uh, a good representative of the female wants of the community, um, which is, I think, a lot of the problem. Um, I mean, that, that's true on both sides, right? That sure. the, the, the extreme is the loudest. I get sure, that. But, but, but when I, you talk about women expressing what they want and what they need, uh, like things that they well, want. Well, I don't think women a, know what they need. I think they know what they want, but whatever. Joe. That's the Joe, question. The, but, but yeah, I just want to back. I think women, like in my experience at least, I've never, like, I've never had. Uh, well, any kind of relationship with well, that, 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 any that's problem. probably because you are submissive and you crave a dominant woman. Um, but anyway, <laughs> as I was going, as I was, uh, we talked about obviously, Joe. Um, I'm not completely ideologically aligned with uh, Louise Perry. Certainly not Mary Harrington. Probably more Louise Perry than not. Um, but I also, oh, fuck, I forgot what I was. We were talking about fuck. What? Women oh, not women what they want. 
show the women who are regretting their sexual, their sexual experiences and oh, are then yes, talking was, about it afterwards. Saying, I think women need to be more confident and more assertive. I, I think totally agree. I think most of this is is I think most of this is um, shifts culturally rather than shifts like legislatively. I'm pretty happy with where we are legislatively. I think that we're doing pretty good, honestly. I, I don't think Joe Biden's an awful president. What? Is the conversation of like telling women to be more vocal, like uh, as it pertains to like, is that ever gonna happen? Like, are, are we gonna I, have I, that? I really want to clarify. Like, okay, whoa, whoa, I, whoa, 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 whoa. Personally... What do we mean when we say more vocal? Joe Lewis, uh, I'm sorry, not Joe Lewis, Joe Brooks. You were talking about being more vocal about sexually bad experiences, and then Wick, you mentioned you were talking about people being more vocal, women being more vocal when they go to the voting booth about what they want in terms of politics. That was right. an example. We, no, hold on. I was, yeah, I but these two things are very different, right? <laughs> yeah, a I, that was an between, example. Okay, like, because, even, because even if you have like a woman who is very intellectual, who is very loud and outspoken about what she wants, right, which I agree is probably true for a group of that group of women, that doesn't necessarily mean that that woman is going to be more self-assured in the bedroom, right? I remember, like, I remember yeah. really quick before I forget. So you you brought up the uh, uh, anti-choice. You brought up bringing, uh, bringing up anti-choice. And I think that that is true about both of these women. Um, and I think personally, at least on my value, I know that obviously some people here are going to disagree, namely Brittany, is that she takes a more individualistic approach, which is fine. And I think that um, people on my side, people like Louise Perry, take a more collectivist approach, which I think ultimately, of course, I think this because it's my side, uh, I think is the right way to go. Like, I think that that keeps um, our country as healthy as possible. I think that's the greatest uh, bet that we have to move towards something more like socialism. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I think is more, maybe more conservative society, uh, a little less anti-choice for safety, right? So I would give up my personal liberties and freedom for my children to be safer and happier. Um, a lot of people don't vote like this. This is the, this is the beauty of America. So beauty I think America. it's just a matter of value. The beauty of well, my shit is five country, dollars for well. Jessica Johnson, and I'll let you go to Tuna after this. Uh, so five dollars from Jessica Johnson to say all the women are complaining that the panel is about men, and all the men are complaining that the panel is about women. I think we made some real progress today. Thank you for the five dollars. Five dollars from Artemis Fowl. Is that even happening? It was it's not, but Testy Testy's uh, got a he's got to spice it up. He's giving me five dollars, yeah. so I'm I'm getting the money. So five dollars oh. from Artemis Fowl to say women overwhelmingly defer to their partner's political opinions, not emphasizing their own. When they're it comes more to open, more agreeable. They want. I think that's changing, but we'll see. No, I want to give it to. So. I want to talk. It's to not because we see that married women vote more conservatively. They're, it's, they're it won't partners. change. Their partners are being relate being replaced by their social milieu, but they are still just as affectable. Uh, Joe, the women who are having sex and then are feeling like the sexual encounter wasn't good and they don't say anything while it's happened, but they say something about they're not less vocal. They're more vocal. They're talking afterwards. A lot of people yeah, but... do not know while they're while they're having sex whether or not they are totally cool with it. Regret is being spoken about in a different way than it used to be. And Louise Perry talks about, about it, this. Okay. Louise Perry Old talks about this. Okay. Actually, I, I think that's, that, that's, that's the world that you're, that you think that you want is the one that you have now, which is the one where women are openly talking about all of their sexual experiences and thoughts without filter, without really thinking, I think a no, lot of time. Finish Tuna. Yeah. Uh, without okay. thinking very often about what the consequences downstream will be for those men, sometimes not caring, sometimes being incentivized to not care by other people because women need to express themselves, talk, yada, yada, yada. There's this new like push for women to be more vocal regardless of consequence. Okay. Um, because of individualism I, and progress for progress. I, I just wanna... I just want to quickly shoot back to something I said on the porn panel ages back. And I think I'm one of the few people there who was somewhat anti-pornography, probably not ex not extremely, but given most were pro, I guess I would put myself on the anti side, which was someone brought up anal sex and said, you know, we don't do it because we like it. We do it because men like it. And I responded, that just kind of makes women sound a bit pathetic to me. It does. And yeah, and that's sort of how I feel. Like, it's less, like, I get you can have a, I've had, like, a casual sexual experience and felt kind of uncomfortable later on because I met this girl later at a bar and she was talking about stuff I know I could have told her, but I don't remember telling her. I was probably too drunk. 
And that just makes me feel kind of weird because she's clearly a bit more knowledgeable, yeah. like more into me than I am. But like, it just makes me feel off. Like I don't like it. But that's very different to like a violent, rough, or you know, painful sexual experience. Like I don't know if I say women are more pathetic, but they might just be more passive. Like I don't yeah, know. But I, I don't know. Passive and pathetic are kind of similar things to a. Point. Well, women are more passive in general. If I were trying to get someone who is really passive to stop being passive, which I've done before, I would only say pathetic in like the craziest of circumstances. But I think it's best. <laughs> to start but, it's probably like, just my frustration, but I like I like a little little what you know? doormat. Joe, yeah, I, mean, like, I would start from a much more empathetic place <laughs> if I were trying no, to change them. Yeah, like, I, I, I would try. Well, there's, a, well there's, another, there's, another, there's another side of this which I think is interesting, which Ayla, sorry, Ayla, 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 talks about, uh, which is that we, we, we treat women with like a collective like gasp every time they fall off their bike, like a kid. Um, and but also we're also peddling this uh, like very your body's yours your body's sacred simultaneously while saying like go fuck do whatever you want don't be a prude don't do whatever and they're like fundamentally like just they are incongruent with each other um, so we either we either need to tell women that rape is less bad or we need to tell them that uh, that having sex with whoever whenever they want it is bad. We have to it's do one of the two. To be sexually liberated while also being responsible. What it's, does liberated it, mean? To be able to just have sex with whoever you do want they, to consensually. Do, no, hold on. Do you think that women and men are sexually liberated the same way? Uh, I, I would think, imagine, I yeah. The gap, answer is no. The do, answer is no. So women, so women, 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 women want different things. They have sex differently than men do. I mean, men have testosterone. They are they are they want different things from a relationship. They want to have sex differently. They want to have more sex with more people. Women do not want these things. Women want to pair bond. W women prefer monogamy. Women for we have completely different sexual proclivities. Not liberation as preference. Being able to do something. No, not to be but, but so the, the liberation, the liberation that women are being sold now is to have sex like men and it is hurting them. If they want. If that's but that's liberation, being able to do as you please, regardless of whoever told you to do it. That is freedom. That's not men that's not liberation. That's now women are being forced to do things they don't want to do, like anal. Like it's, like it's, like, it's, like it's it's completely it's completely because now there's a social is, push is to not be prude. To be, to be against free. your natural it's possible to be sexually free I mean, while simultaneously hey, saying, hey. You're on my boundaries. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to go past those boundaries. You're forgetting how pathetic women are, like Joe just said. Right. And you're forgetting that women are very agreeable and very high openness. So, so the solution we, is... We need to treat women like men. And we can't do that because women are not men. So what you want women to do is to pull away from... like As a collective, pull away from sexual liberation as we know it in terms of just having yes. sex with whoever you want to whenever instead of yes. saying hey look you can do as you please but understand that you need to be the one to make those boundaries clear with your voice women have obviously like, women have been shown that they cannot do that <laughs> so it's so you feel like that's reject, just like the, hold on hold on i reject this notion that they can't they absolutely can't. It's a cultural effect of the we reasons that you they don't are know if it's like cultural. Me. In fact, there's more I evidence to suggest it's that it's more nature than it is nurture. I think it's both. I think it's both nature and nurture. But I do think it's possible to communicate to women, hey, look, you can be, you can have the, cho you can make the choices you want, but you can but also you're be forget, an adult You're forgetting, you're forgetting that people. women, uh, pr like, pr like primate wise, like primally, our higher agreeableness, high openness, this could be nurture. But mostly, we've seen this throughout all of time, no matter what. We've seen it in, 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 uh, even, even if you're, you think that you're, even if you think that you're trans, even in trans communities, we see that this is true because it's harder for trans men to assimilate with masculinity than it is for trans women to assimilate with femininity. Yeah, let's just, this is just true. Let's just say the This is literally the most misogynistic women I've ever had the displeasure to listen to. Hello, I'm sorry. Yep, 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 yep. I can already tell that you're estrogenic. Kill yourself. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, 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 yes. Very oh, estrogenic. No. Uh, it, it, as if no, that matters not. at all. Oh, no. I was Never mind. It's my facial hair. She laughed and she can say that because she's a, a woman. This no, is no, estrogenic. No, this is estrogenic fat part. distribution. I can already see it. Our, You're a hair man. Hard line on the... What does it matter how much estrogen I have in this small? Letting you know. You'd be happier if you had less. He laughed. Do you want to listen to men? Because Wick is talking to you. No. Not weak men. Not betas. Oh, wait a no, you gotta. Oh, you can't just diss the man running the fucking show. 
That is so crazy. But she does that because no. she thinks she can move into so, toxic femininity as like a tool. It. Look how much she loves it. Wait, you gotta yeah. sit your feet down and do something. You gotta eat caves. Uh-huh. Men are in his way. Men What's cram dominant here? women. They're like workhorses. Wait, What's shut this happen? shit down. Please. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna let our guest who called in, uh, what's your name? Sour Eleven. We're gonna <laughs> let him have his say. And then we're going to respond to la- uh, Sour Lemon here. And then uh, we're probably going to end the panel because we're out of colors. So, Sour Lemon, give us what you got. So, this is, this will probably wind up being uh, more politically centric because that's what I care about. But it is related. Um, and I, I will start, though, by saying uh, I severely dislike any sort of conflation with liberal values, with leftist values and socialist values. Because they're extremely distinct. And as a socialist, I absolutely despise the Democratic Party. They're the fucking worst. Uh, cut a liberal and a fascist bleeds. Uh, Jesus Christ! Uh, never vote for the Republican Party, of course. But the Democratic Party is uh, god-awful. Uh, all so of their you policies are Hold on, hold on, hold on. Power limit. Right. Okay, so you think what the Democrats it? are awful, never vote for a Republican, so you, what's the answer to you? Not vote? Uh... My answer is, I will vote how I please on election day. Voting is the most important, least consequential thing that you can do. Um, but that, um, geez, in, in terms of the 2024 election, I have no yeah. plans uh, to vote, at least in the primary for Joe Biden. Uh, I plan well, to vote um, for Joe Biden. I'm talking general election. So general election Christ. day, hold on, just if I may. Uh, the general election day comes around, okay? The choices, more and more, are looking like you have two. You have uh, two realistic choices. You have Trump and you have Biden, okay? On the one Biden. hand, uh, you're going to get... Uh, that's all I needed. Thank you. Fair enough. It's, then, it's not an easy all... choice. I hate him. Uh, he's allowing a genocide to happen in Palestine. Oh but... my fucking God. No. You're, you, you're, this is your brain on microplastics. This is your brain on microplastics. Uh, well, we, we don't need to... Joe Biden is the most... Joe Biden is the in a long time. In a oh, long all of the chemical talk and in the analogies that you want. This is what Lav is talking about when she's saying estrogenic. Yes. Perpetually dissatisfied, not tactically rooted. Oh, I'm I'm actually satisfied in a my degree life. of absurdity. Cut of a liberal and a fascist blade. Do you know what happens? No, that, I mean, that's something that, 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 that the fascist. The feminine, lilt, the feminine lilt of your voice is very... Okay. You can tell that you have been uh, slow on the male social well, hierarchy. Okay. I can try and, and defend how a liberal and a fascist bleeds if I want to, but that's Sour, not the no point. No fish hook theory, please. I just have a question for you. And you nothing comes out because they're not Sour. real and they don't Sour. matter. Okay, Sour. Sour. Queen. Sour, I have a question for you. You said that me, Brittany, uh, Lav, and Allison were some of the most misogynistic women that you No, no, no. Heard. I said Lav is. Just just Lav. Not okay. you guys. I did you have any problems Lav. with anything that we said? What, what problems did you yeah, have? I mean, I might have problems here and there, but not overwhelmingly or not to any significant degree. Okay. <laughs> The women I mean, my seem to be able to work with, with Lav just fine. So that's an interesting <laughs> d- delineation. <laughs> Um, uh, really quick, so, when you're talking about this, like this idea of like leftists versus liberals, and like oh, labs and misogynists, and what is the primary thing that you think that the left should do to court men? Since we're talking about politics and men and, and sexism and all that, what do you what do you think it is? Collectivization of the economy. Um, we need to support materially people, uh, and when we do that, everybody regardless of if they're men or women, will vote correspondingly. If you message that you are going to help people economically, financially, and if you message that you're going to give them freedoms, then they are going to vote for you. In my mind, there is not... There are obviously misogynistic policies happening, such as the uh, re, uh, getting rid of Roe v. Wade, but uh, in my mind, the the most Im- there is not a significant delineation between how men and women care about what happens uh, politically, because so they care for- about yeah. being economically uh, stable. They care about the having the good lives, and they care the, about being the free. right way to cater to young men. They get it different ways. They want and it I, different ways. No, they, they, hold on. Really. We got a lot of people wanting. We got a lot of people want to respond. This is the order we're gonna go to. We're gonna have a shot. My question is two-parted. If I can. We're gonna, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get to you, Tony Chip. We're gonna go to Chip. Okay. Rashad, and then we're gonna go to um everyone else. 
Uh, so two chip, Rashad. Okay. Go. Second, uh, second half of that. Are you willing to close the border in order to make it so that men oh, feel economically this is, supported? This is actually a very significant thing that I wanted to fucking rail into everybody here who has spoken on immigration about. Closing the border is not the answer to immigration. Oh, uh, illegal immigration does depress wages, but that to counterbalance that. Uh, the answer is to legally integrate them into society so that they stop being given jobs for lower than minimum wage. The, the, the wage can be depressed. And if you stop bringing in illegal immigrants, you are uh, completely destroying the agricultural economy of the United States of America, which thrives on illegal labor. Uh, there's like, like 70 percent of agricultural workers. Thing? No, it's How a bad they, they thing. Can't, yeah, they can't be unionized if they're if they're not citizens. I'm saying don't get rid of them. Make them citizens. Because if you get rid of them, you're destroying the agricultural economy. Okay, 70% of agricultural jobs. workers are illegal jobs. immigrants. Yeah, you're making, you're making jobs for people who are born here who are uh, dissatisfied and can't get jobs otherwise. I, this is not making... I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You are not you're opening seats. taking... You're opening you're up not positions. taking... You are not taking or giving away jobs by trying to close also, down if the we border. Live, if we live in a socialist society, which I'm sure is what you want, how are we going to make up so much money? And obviously, if we give free health care to everyone, especially immigrants like California is, what stops an, a huge influx of people from coming? And where's that money coming from? How are we going to pay for all that? We already have more than enough money flowing through our economy to pay for okay. all of that. And, okay, like, and you, I, just... I can say I can say tax billionaires, which is true. I can also what? say nationalize uh, our inelastic. You gotta let him finish his point. And I can also can say nationalize our inelastic industries. Well, this is this is just ridiculous and, uh, because especially the ridiculous. tax the billionaires thing makes me. This is why the tax the billionaires thing is retarded because a lot of leftists, especially socialists, are just like we should just tax Elon Musk and and Jeff Bezos. Uh, you know, uh, tw thirty percent of what they earn, but you don't even understand that most of their assets are not money that is readily available in yeah, the fucking Yeah, you can tax accounts. those assets. That's not impossible. No, you, you can't can have because real estate taxes. Are, are you public, can have uh, public companies. So you're okay. not. Oh my god. That's, you, it, that's not impossible to tax. This is, right. this is what happens. You, like, it's that's you know, actually you're idiotic. A trans woman. To say that you're you a trans woman. If a woman dates you, she's a lesbian. If a woman dates you, she's a lesbian. And good honor. Can I check really quick? So we're talking, we can say things, we can say things, we can say things, but in order to make it so that unions exist and people are actually moving towards policies like you want, making a viable political party for the left that isn't the Democrats, that that does start with like less immigration, that does start with- No, it people, doesn't. It doesn't yes, start with yes, less it immigration. Does. Yes, no, it, it doesn't. doesn't. No. Yes, it does. Okay. So if people can't unionize because they can always be busted because there's infinite replaceable labor, how are you going to stop that? You uh, make the companies who are hiring illegal immigrants responsible for the fact that they are importing immigrants to work for them. This is oh, like an really actually doing, real thing that they're doing. Companies are importing illegal immigrants to work for them. Who? Who makes them responsible? The, the government. This yes, literally and how does what the, the government, government does. Why would the government ever care unless you create an actual left party that would hold them accountable? And that's the problem. And this is why I hate the Democratic Party, because they are capitalists. They love capital. They will never implement that's policies how do you make an opposition? that are against capital. How do you make an opposition party? If you can't get anybody to unionize. You, you have to organize from the ground, grassroots movements, yada, yada, yada. I Look. The, this has not been my intention is to argue how to create okay. a viable leftist party. Fair enough, fair enough. Just, fair. There were just okay, some things fair. I wanted to address with what had I been said. I want to give some other previously. people, before we let you go, I want to get some other people to have their say um, and uh, on what you've been saying. I want to give it to Rashad, then Allison, the fair queen. Uh, well, no, uh, I, I, I completely I surrender any point I've had. Okay, you're going to surrender at any point you have? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you're sorry. surrendering your time to laugh. I'm letting you know. 100%. Yeah, laugh, take, take a real. <laughs> Am I? Oh, was he going first? No, you okay. got it. Okay. Uh, how do you? Um, why do you? I want to know in your own words why you think the overturning of Roe v. Wade is misogynistic. Because it takes away women's bodily autonomy. But for what purpose? Because they didn't. Because want they're to... women. So what do you think misogyny is? Misogyny is anything that is against uh, equality for women. 
No, so it's distaste for women. Oh, right? well, you have whatever. A, you Who have cares? you have it. No, so it's not equality, right? Because we the sexes are never going to be equal. Men can't get pregnant. Yeah, and I'm sure if men if men could get pregnant. There would be a Roe v. Wade that stopped them from having abortions. It's I not the fact that it's women pregnant. that are having the abortions. It's the fact that babies are dying. So that's well, not misogyny. Like, that difference is precisely why we need Roe v. Wade in place. Because they can get pregnant and they should have the right to their own bodily No, I economy. agree with you. I just think it's annoying that you said misogyny because I think that people like you overuse misogyny. And it's why people on the conservative side don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of things that you've said in this it's, when you panel. Say, it's like when you say genocide, it's like when you say genocide, it takes away the fact that there uh, are actual uh, genocides happening. And when I'm you sorry. Say I'm sorry that like you don't recognize wolf. genocide while it's happening. That's my. I guess it's what my fault that you don't recognize I'm genocide. Gonna, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you what a genocide is, but it's like the boy who cried wolf, right? So the conservatives are less likely to agree with us. Then this goes back to the uh, the uh, you know I, the idea of the whole panel look, is that when we are reactionary I, to each other, there's less common ground, and we work worse together. I right. I so you can't use it, emotionally loaded language like that, I especially as a man. It comes off as very I, annoying. I, Whatever. Don't let her lecture you, bro. Fight I, back. I, I don't give a fuck if conservatives Even agree telling you something with beta. me. I want to make their lives better regardless. Healthcare for you all. You have to get them agree with you to vote collectively, retard. If, if I can't convince yeah. them to vote for me okay. by giving them policies that I am explaining to them how it will materially if benefit them. If you're the them, one explaining to them, it's on them. Then it's over for them. If you're the one explaining it to them, it's over. <sighs> okay, you feel that way. Fine. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not that great at convincing people, people anyway. You've already used I, two words wrong, and it's been yeah. fucking ten minutes. Love, love. Why you gotta be so? Why you got? Look, you only I think I use genocide wrong because you don't know anything about genocide. When I'm going man on the man hater. Um. So, uh, one of the the first thing that I heard when I walked into this conversation with, or in the listening to this. Uh, was something about uh, people being pressured into dating within your political group. And I don't think that that's accurate to say that people are being pressured to date within their political group. I think people date within their political group because those ideological disagreements are substantive. Uh, that's also that true. You cannot, it's, it is difficult to get along with somebody that is your ideological opponent. Uh, you, like... It, it represents you having fundamentally different values. That's also other. true, but there is a more puritanical culture out there in the zeitgeist. We are we are uh, mm. more we are less tolerant mm. of differences than we have been for a very very long time. I won't say ever, right? Because it's much easier now to be less tolerant. We do not have to work with someone or be with someone or even interact with someone who disagrees with us. We can just block them well, and they go away and okay, we don't but like, have any wait, other... wait, when did that happen like when did it happen social media when... social yes, media i was actually gonna say this ties oh, into like, literally, else did I it happen say, after segregation or before did it happen just during the women's like liberation movement or did it happen no i'm this is very recently this is so, like so you think up until very... then people had been getting along no, they had been fighting, but it's a substantively different level, and it's sub we have different tools to do it, which we lacked before. So, for example, before, even when you fought, even during the 60s, you had to live together, right? Like, you had well, no, to, we just you had people to back interact then. with the community. Yeah, you went to the same schools, churches, No, that's not true. My mom was in one of the first desegregated schools in Detroit. Like, you weren't living still together yeah, until you had to. Okay, Who I understand. Thought? Look, I this... It's mm -hmm. it's not it's not a new phenomenon. It's just an exacerbated phenomenon. It's something sure. that has went from like before it did happen. Now it happens in, an, in a much greater intervals, and also it's easier to do. Right? You're describing the internet. And I yeah, don't think way. it's symmetric. I don't think it's all groups that are equally showing a newfound distaste for ideologic diversity. It seems like the group that, okay, with love that I've been harping on, my liberal women friends, seems like they have the, uh, the highest level of distaste for ideological diversity. They are the yeah. least likely to be able to tolerate somebody with like dramatically di divergent views from their own. Okay, can I ask a question? Like, I maybe it's just because of my bubble, but like, I have very conservative Trump voting relatives like my family is very all of them like when we have oh, well dinner, they're your family though you can't choose them you, you know, love them anyway that, but, like, but you, how many friends do you have that are like trumpers uh 
that a you aren't few. related to that you didn't a few yeah i have very diverse i'm not i'm an anomaly i like everybody but like mm-hmm. that's you know because i look at the person as a consciousness like i think you're a soul so like your voting habits are from your like what you've digested as like a child moving into adulthood so i think like that's the reason i can't have diverse friends but that's what i'm saying like we're not accepting that the world isn't you so when we say like this is my solution for the world you keep making it about you not you you but like we keep <laughs> making it about the you that we imagine women are like this men are like this and i'm like people are so diverse and nuanced. Like, why aren't we acknowledging like people are real and they're having real well, lived experiences whether they're men or women? Bill, I think that it's important. And I do want to push back on like what you said um, or something, what you said earlier, Sour. So it is certainly true that like, if you have a partner that is ideologically different than you, you probably are going to fight more, right? You probably aren't going to get along more with them. And it's probably, you probably prefer to date somebody who is more ideologically aligned to you. However, right. The idea, and this is something that frustrates me a lot in these conversations, is that we treat like talking about like who we choose as a partner completely in a vacuum. It's about my values and your values. How do you as an individual fit with me as an individual? And that's the conversation that we have about dating. That's not entirely true. People absolutely make decisions about who they choose to date, who they choose to marry, who they choose to be their friends based off of how their social group interacts and how they react to them. And that's not just about politics. It's also about class and it's about money. <clears throat> so a good example of this, like this is a an anti more of an anti red pill talking point, like the idea that like you can be if you come from a family that is an old money, like wealthy family background, you can't date somebody that like has a that is, comes to the dinner table and they're with their Lamborghini like slams their pinky ring on the table and talks about how many bitches he banged last week for instance right because if you do that your father is going to be incredibly angry right and he's not going to want your boyfriend to come back to Thanksgiving the next week but the same thing is true with like politics right if you bring as a liberal woman your super duper conservative trumper boyfriend to the socialist leftist friends giving to sit down with him your socialist leftist friends at that t- at that gathering are not going to be happy about the person that you bring by. And you may like to date that person, but you will get endless reams of shit for dating him. And it will be very difficult for you to date him as a consequence. I think that like we really undervalue the impact that our families and that our friends have on who we choose to date and why we choose to marry them. The impact Humans crave assimilation. Like humans crave oneness and assimilation and collectivism. Okay, I agree with that. Do you got anything else? Uh, that was fair. Um, so, uh, be brief because uh, we just swing back from lag. Do some fight back. So an- another thing is that uh, a lot of the reason mm-hmm. why uh, men, I forget like what exactly was happening in the conversation um, at the time, uh, but I said men perceive disenfranchisement because all they've known is franchisement. So like when men feel like they're being shafted by the system. It's not actually the system shafting them. It's that the system is increasing its accessibility to other people. And because men have historically been the privileged class within the system, that uh, losing of their franchisement to, to give to other people is causing them to feel like they're being disenfranchised. Yeah, but we're talking about different generations of men, though, right? Like, the generation of men that had it all lay out in front of them is not the same generation of men we're talking about now, which is Gen Z. Right. Like Gen Z has a completely different set of problems and social obstacles than boomers sitting on top of generational and generational wealth and all this money they built. Sure. To build their life. But it doesn't it is, change it that men still are uh, franchised more so than other populations. Of people. And well, it depends on what, it level it depends of on what domain is in the um, social domain. Women are more accepted than men. Inside of the workplace, depending on what job it is. Men are more accepted than women. Women are more accepted than men in some other place. The the this idea that like the people that are in education that the men feel like they fit in more, even though the statistics say that men are dropping out more than ever. Like we're we're harping too much on this idea, and that that men have been permanently enfranchised, and we will never start to feel like we've been ousted from 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 new domains. Like they. They don't want to be a part of the left because the left has historically not been a pl- good place for men. Like That's not true. That's actually exactly what I want to push back on. The left is a good place for men. The left consistently advocates for things that are good for men, especially economically. Uh, the men, in, or the left, uh, in terms of, like, personal betterment always says the same things that uh, similarly right-wing people say, such as, like, work out, better yourself. I fully nah. believe that everybody can be a seven. 
uh, no. if you just make that. yourself look better. The, I've the, never the seen the right wing. Advocate. I've never seen the right Hold wing. Someone could never be a seven. Hold up, let me let I, me push back on that real quick. Can I? Can you I will get called rapey, like for like sending a text at night while you're drunk. Like that's a you are well, no, wait, you are crazy. The left, the left, if you I'm think that that's actually the case. Okay. The left. That's, the, that's I, the, okay. Even me. if that's not the norm for the left, that is something that never happens mm. on the right. You have to see left, like what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, because the, the right normalizes men's sexual assault, okay. sexually assaulting. Uh, no, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get in the Get it out, and then I'm going to for the rest of your life. Hold up. Hold up. The left is not in any way, shape, or form making any advice to men outside of just be nice, just be a good person. Like the, when the left speaks to men, it automatically comes from a place of like, you stabbed your wife, didn't you? You beat your no, wife, didn't no, you? No, that is it's literally un okay. okay. This, this are, actually speaks to people's ignorance of, you, of what leftist on, people say. The left leftist are content creators, men creators from a place say. of assuming that if they're not successful with women, something is wrong with them, or maybe they're a bad person. It doesn't start with, bro, you're fat as fuck. Oh, by the way, you're broke as fuck, or you don't dress well, or you don't do like, we never start by just looking men just honestly and saying, bro, you are a bum. It starts with, hey, be nice, be kind. Most of these guys aren't assholes. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. And when the left sits there and avoids being honest, like, yeah, height, muscle, money, these things matter to women. It becomes it becomes really, really easy well, for like Andrew Tate and the Red Pill. It doesn't matter to project what women feel. All of that doesn't matter to women. This is what I'm talking about. When we play the fantasy game with men, it becomes really easy for the Red Pill to get the Brittany easy Brittany lives job. in a fantasy. Brittany does not live no, in like, reality. Literally, like, literally, like Andrew Huberman has literally talked about this. Let me get it off real quick. Women care about height. Women do care about size. Women care about muscle. Women care about money. Women care about status. They care about all these things. And that's okay. It's perfectly fine. I have nothing wrong with that. The problem we have is when we lie to young men and say, women aren't worried about that. They go out into the dating world. They realize how wrong that is. And then they're like, okay, well, where do I go from here? Because the left is bullshitting me. And the right wing, although they are talking about crazy conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. they are offering reality. It becomes it's really it. obvious it to me. Yeah. Why okay, hold on. Wait. I agree with you. That women care about those things. But Andrew Huberman uh, referenced this really great study. If I don't know if you guys you follow Andrew, but he talks about – he's a neuroscientist. He literally talks about how kindness is at the top of those wants overall for everyone, men and women. Yeah, actually. but you already have but, to be attractive. But you wait, wait, I agree with you. I, Rish, I want to talk to Rashad because I feel like him and I are going to have a lot more in common in terms of talking. Okay? As someone with eight brothers, I'm worried about them. Okay? But I feel like when I think about their needs – I am aware that they need everyone. They all need to be talked to different because they're different kinds of people. You feel me? So like this idea oh that we're all going to talk to men and women the same is just like aggravating. Lav, literally breathe, girl. It's not all about you. I know. I can't. I know. I, I but like that's I the problem. I, listen, if you don't like my solutions, that's fine. I don't like yours either. Cool. Right? Relax. I to react to you. Get over it. I believe let, in the collective, me, me, but I believe in the collective. Do your four square breathing. Do your, do your, uh, your DBT oh and God. deal with Okay, why don't you be a person? Like, this is so inappropriate. This is why you're so blocked, Lav. Okay, all of you. All of you, I stop it. I oh promise God, I really want to talk I, to you, Brittany. Oh, Please. I Wait, I'm it. not going on a panel with Lav again. She's going to be this. She, like, picks personal. We're going to let Brittany get it out. We're going to let Brittany get her whole thought out. And then after she gets her whole thought out, you can respond to it, I promise you. And then you can have all the reactions yeah, you want. And then we're gonna let, we're gonna say goodbye to Sour Lemon and get our last guest on. Damn, so Brittany, so finish your thought. Okay. Then we can have some responses. Brittany. Thank you. I agree. Humans need purpose, meaning, and a true understanding of themselves to be good participants in society, to run as a as a like cohesive collective. Right? I believe in society, which means I believe in a collective. But that collective is made out of individuals who all need unique help who all need unique attention. So when a man comes to me and says, I need your help, I need to literally look at him and say, what do you need? Because if I look at him and say, well, oh, men just need this. Here's your prescription. And then he looks at it and goes, well, I'm autistic and I'm neurodivergent. And actually this doesn't fit my mold. And now I'm very confused. Or I'm actually neurotypical and this doesn't fit my mold either. We're running into the same problem over and over again, right? And with ADHD and autism on the rise, we need to pay more attention to the changes. I want to push back a little bit, though, because I think young men are kind of saying, like, look, we're telling you what's wrong with us. We're being vulnerable with our partners and it's not working. We're we're, we're having all these like we're having all these social and relationship issues. And y'all are kind of like either 
not wanting to talk to us or telling us stuff that's not really working. We're telling you exactly what we're dealing with. And now, of course, we have individual young men that have their own situations sure. going on. But young men as a young Gen Z collective are literally showing with the media they consume. These motherfuckers are saying exactly what we want to hear in terms of advice. So I think that when we look at what young men are saying, it's okay to have a more collectivist approach because I think the young men who have more specific issues will probably solve that themselves. But what is really, really clear that collectively young men are struggling with social uh, interactions, romantic interactions. Uh, and those seem to be the two biggest ones young men are hyping up about the most. The economic and educational, they seem to be really quiet about that. But the other sub, they seem to be hyping up the most. And I think that we can answer that from a more collectivist perspective. Okay, Allison has wanting to get in. Allison's been wanting to, and we're gonna give it to her. Yeah. Um. Okay, bouncing off her shot a little bit. When you're like, they won't be honest with these men. They gas up these men. They just like blow smoke up the asses of these men, and they reject it, and that's why they go right wing. Like, there's an argument made oftentimes, and this is kind of this is a proposed hypothesis to the earlier statement. Of I'm sorry. I just want to say this out loud to you guys. If Andrew Tate is the kind of man that men as a collective are turning to for advice and he teaches individualism and pulling yourself out by your bootstraps, then how is the collective narrative ever going to help these men? If they literally are told we have to do it ourselves, we have to get our own Bugattis, these are the men they want advice from and we're giving them opposite advice. Like they keep telling us their problems, but they find all male spaces to help them with those problems. And then they make fun of women for needing collective groups or they make fun of gay guys for needing collective groups or they make fun of other men for needing collective groups. So I'm a little confused. Like, are the men who want Andrew Tate actually the men we're targeting here? Because they want to be with Andrew Tate. And if we help them, that kind of contradicts Andrew Tate's bullshit idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. How are you asking for, like, help without asking for help without asking for help? really really receptive to that kind of talk and i think a lot of guys over in the military can relate like when you go to basic training you get told like look you're, you can only do the x amount of push-ups you are a fucking loser you are a bum it's that kind of like i don't think men are masochistic but i think men Forced want military to description them. men want you to tell them what the fuck is wrong i think men are not as afraid of being told what is wrong as we tend to think and i think that liberals although we do tend to be really compassionate and empathetic young men are saying look like, bro, if we're dressing like shit, tell us. If we're not, cool be cool. like, if we're not socializing properly, tell I, us. I think I, young men are being really, really. I said this. I said this like men were workhorses. You looked at me like I was fucking crazy, Rashad. Um, also, I have an, a good question for you. Way. You probably I, said probably, okay. That's probably true. I also have a question. Do you think your place, specifically moving through the world as a black man, that you think that you feel that even more from the left? Like, do you think that they try to coddle you even more? Uh, I think, I don't think the left tries to coddle too much. I think they're like, really, I think they're as empathetic as people are probably going to get for the black struggle in America. But I don't think that, um... I think it's helpful. Like, their prescriptions are helpful, though. Because it's very gentle, like, parenting. It's very gentle, very, there, there like... Are some, there are some reality checks the black community definitely needs. Um, the, the right Such wing as? is definitely more prompted to... You said what? Such as? Well, for example, we have a massive crime problem and we seem to be completely comfortable with kind of like kind of overlooking that on the left and black people are the main ones suffering from it. You wonder why so many young black men have paranoia, why so many young black men are ruthless to each other. When you come out into a community where there's so much crime, like it's it, it starts a cycle. And I think that we're not approaching that from the left with a we're like, look, we have a crime problem. Let's address it. Let's get a little bit more aggressive with the sentencing for violent crime. No, Let's get a little bit more realistic. No, I, I have to push back on this immediately. First of all, liberalisms uh, or liberals yeah, black guy, shut are, up. are very yeah, yeah, shut up, black guy. Sir. He has the answers. No, no I'm liberal. I'm here to listen. I I'm not I'm not going to say that your experience as somebody is, or a black person's experience growing up in a neighborhood full of crime is necessarily wrong. I'm going to try and explain it, how that yeah, comes about and the solutions to that. So first of all, uh, first of oh all, my God. liberals uh, do, are actually extremely hard on crime. This is why I hate liberal. This is one of the reasons why I hate liberalism. Democratic Party actually loves funding the police. Um, but second of all, the reason there's a lot of crime yeah. in Black communities predominantly is socioeconomic issues. Uh, it, it is historically true, consistently, poverty is linked to crime every single time. And when you are a black person who grew up in a black community where historically for generations, centuries, 
uh, you have been systemically reduced to effectively nothing, and you have well, no access to the same uh, kind of economic opportunities that are being more Hold up. Small correction. Small correction. It's not the poor people that are committing the crime. It's people go to poor communities to commit crime because they are under-policed, they are underserved, they have That's less uh, institutional defenses, right? They are victims of crime to a much higher degree. They are not perpetrators of crime to a much higher degree because they it's are It's different poor. crimes also. It's different crimes. It so, like, white people crimes. create more white color we do, crimes. We do, we, have never, to, we do have to move this along. We do have I to will, move this along to power. I will I love never. You. I love you. Oh, he's going? But, yeah, he's going to go. Oh, that's that's too oh. bad. That's too fucking bad. We, I, I, I want him on. I want to be clear. To I would love to have Sour now. on next week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM him. I'd love to have Sour on next week, and I will, I will make sure that you guys are there. You ruined the white splaining moment. You know that, right? Yeah, uh, that was. Look, you I just. Think we, that's what I, that's what I was talking about, though. Like there, like that is what I see. My view of the left is break. that. That was like literally. Awesome. We had we had one there, Wick. I'm not gonna lie, we had it right there. We should have kept it. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I want to I want to keep I want to keep people's. I, this is going longer than I usually do, right? So I want I want to make sure. Okay. Uh, uh, and we do have one last guest, um, my friend. Uh, go ahead. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. You're, yep. you're live. Hello. Yep. Hello. Hey, hey, sorry. Um, just quick little. I'm I'm working, so just a little quick little comment. Um. I was talking to Joe Brooks about, like, women's assertiveness. And uh, he sort of convinced me that's more of a human thing. But my, my opinion is I think women are much more assertive towards guys they don't, like, like and much less assertive towards guys they're attracted to. They sort of, like, adopt their partner's beliefs. Is that my off base? Do you guys sort of agree with that? Disagree? Um, or? Well, women, I, I don't know. I, they're definitely higher agreeable, higher openness. Obviously, you would see more of that if you're liked, because women also like to assimilate. So if yeah. if you're liked, then yeah, if you're attracted to someone. Also, I don't know if you've heard like the meme that's going around right now, but like a woman, if she's trying to date you, will like go through your Instagram likes and your Twitter likes and like literally like learn your birthday, your favorite music, your favorite everything, like stalk you and then like become this like perfect image of you. That is that seems to be like a very female thing. That's literally um, a stereotype in TV shows growing up that men would do that to women. It's in media. It's yeah, story isn't that's that like you, the whole TV show? Like, is that the point of that? Sure, actually, like, you know what? I'm, I don't even know why we're having this because men and women are actually the exact same thing. Men and women are the exact same. They actually, there's no difference biologically. And everything I'm saying is actually fucking insane because I'm on bath salts. I'm on drugs right now. So, my bad. Yeah, well, the, the type of my drugs bad. that make you ignorant as opposed to the ones that make you enlightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is very I, yeah, important. Yeah, but he's a level five. I'm a level one. And I don't know well, if I'll ever get there. But There might be something to, to the idea that men used to do that kind of stuff more because they were the chasers. Because, like, women were sexually gatekeeping a lot. Yep. Um, now, arguably... It's women who are chasing commitment more. Like the fem cell is not a woman oh, well, who can't get point. laid. It's a woman who can't get commitment. Like totally. arguably women are chasing that, like chasing a man's desire to like lock her down, basically make her more than like a fuck buddy. Basically. It's like the yeah, well, sexual the, revolution has changed the like chaser dynamic. Yeah. The the female female also just old. have always had more influence on everybody's opinion. No matter sex, one direction or another, and why I'm an influencer. But go what'd you say? Well, why that's I'm why you're so influential. Oh. That's true, and that's also. I'm not gonna. We'll 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 leave it that. Um, but like, if you're attracted to your partner, we do have this innate thing in the back of our head where we're like, well, people that believe good things, good things happen to them, and that's why they're sexy. They were <laughs> the, <laughs> a sexy person wouldn't have a bad idea. Yeah, that, that's I have to go. But hey, it's um, been fun talking yeah. to y'all. We're gonna, we're gonna Bye, Allison. Awesome. 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 We're going to let, let Fairy Queen get the last word in um, and, 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 and get us uh, tie this up in a bow. And then we're yeah. going to leave. And gang, remember, 6 p.m. or not? I'm sorry, not 6 p.m. Eastern. No, that was wrong. 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, we're going to have Destiny and No Opinion on. Again, No Opinion, right Substacks, one of the, the, the largest Substack uh, persons out there. Uh, and they're going to talk to you about politics. But anyway, Fairy Queen, go. All right. So oh, I will drop this link in our group chat if you guys care to like look at this article like later. 
and this is something that I want to ask the panel because I hear these types of like, because this is not the first time where I've heard like a group of people say that we really need to get men more involved with the left, right? We really need to appeal to men's emotions. We need to appeal to what men want. We need to make these policies, you know, more amenable to men. And like, we've been discussing all night, like how to do that and how to achieve that, if that's a good thing, like why it's a good thing. And I want to introduce the idea that in some contexts, it may not always be a good thing to try to make a policy or to try to make something equitable to both men and women. And why I think it is important in some contexts um, perhaps to have some um, policies or some programs that are specifically directed at women and are not equally directed towards men and women. Um, I don't know what research actually validates this. This the man, the n- person who wrote this article, his name is Lundy Bancroft. He was he was a person who worked with uh, domestic um, abusers for over tw- for years and years. He wrote a book in the '90s that was called "Why Does He Do That?" where he psychologically profiles uh, men who have who have statistically committed. Um, t- uh, who have committed like extreme, extreme domestic violence crimes against their wives. One of the things that he complains about in this article towards the bottom is he complains about the de-genderization, de-gendering um, the, battered, the battered women's movement. Today, we do not have a battered women's movement. We do not have an abused women's movement. We have a domestic violence. Uh, pro- we have domestic violence programs. We have um, domestic violence shelters. And he specifically complains in this article about the fact that many domestic violence shelters have actually opened their doors to include both men and women, which I realize flies in the face of like what we typically say on these panels, which is that, isn't it terrible that there are so many domestic violence shelters that do not allow men to go, that you do not have a place to go, right? Um, But what he specifically states that when we de-gender discussing domestic violence, that this actually, according to him, has had a huge negative impact upon women's rights. And I will tell you that many of the appeals that are often made to be inclusive of men on the left, I don't know if all of those are positive to women. So I'll give you another example. So it's often the case where women will come onto these panels and they will talk about like um, experiences of being sexually violated, fears of being alone with men, fears of like having like uh, sending their child. I've had this conversation with Wick a couple of times. Uh, the idea of sending like your five-year-old son into a school. Not that I'm scary to all, be clear. I just want to make sure there wasn't. Well, to be clear, to an all male led. So all janitors, all admi- all administration, all teachers, all men. And like the idea and, and the, and when you push back and when you say things like, well, men commit violence at like higher rates, men are more likely to commit sexual assault, you immediately get pushback, right? You immediately told that you're a bigot because after all, women also sometimes commit sexual assault, right? And isn't it terrible to men and aren't you stigmatizing men? There are many liberal left-leaning people who when you talk about this, who you talk about the genuine fear that you have for the safety of yourself and for your kids and why you do not want to have men in your spaces in specific instances, you are immediately met with a ton of pushback And this is done, by the way, in the name of being more inclusive of men, of considering men, of considering men's mental health and worrying about we are stigmatizing men. We really need to bring them in. But the cost of that, the cost of like this rhetoric could be and I think has been that it will that it ultimately will wind up with sacrificing the rights and the safety of women in some instances. Right. I don't want to be in a situation where I say I don't want to have a male provider. I don't feel comfortable hiring a male nanny. I don't want to have a male esthetician when I go to get a Brazilian wax and then to be met and then to be met immediately with, well, but hang on. Like, do you really think that men are so much worse than women? Like, shouldn't we be able to? And this is the sort of stuff that you hear as a liberal woman from liberal people. The not wanting a male nanny. Right. I again, I'll push back on that all day. Um, That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Men have such higher pedophilia rates. It's insane. I don't know why you would push back on that. We're going to have to have a discussion another day on that because there's plenty of reasons. Me and we and Ferry hashed this out before. We've right? hashed this out many times. We've hashed this out before. Disagree. Me and you haven't, but there's there's reason to believe that the data is just incorrect. And I'll I can I can uh, go yeah. real quick on that. Is that again, uh, men's sexual assaults are taken less seriously, especially when they're done by women. Right? They're much less likely to be taken seriously, much less likely to be reported. Women get away with it. They're underreported. Um, and so while, yes, the reported we rates, can have a whole the rates, but we can have, have a, we, we can have a discussion another day. I do want to end this, though, because I'm hungry and I saw Allison eating pizza and I want pizza, too. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Um, gang, we're going to rate out. We'll go to uh, speaking of not 
ostracizing men. We're going to go to Irrelevant, the king incel himself. And uh, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> make sure you let him know that this is a hate raid, okay? And um, I, I really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Peace out. Go. You know, I did not realize it was going to be like a political debate. Even as I was reading the data, I just always see these things as like social issues. So even if you're like, I didn't see it as like people trying to get people to vote a certain way. Like my brain doesn't give a fuck how you vote, bro. Because like at the end you vote. I mean, I give a fuck how you vote, but like you vote as a reflection of your understanding of your own values and needs. So I was like, oh, and so I just didn't expect the panel, I think, to go in that particular direction. But as you guys know, ultimately, society is the collective and society is diverse. So the collective has different needs. And those different needs also have different individuals with different micro needs. So ultimately, you know what I mean? Oh. So ultimately, I want people to have a good experience while they're here on earth for a limited amount of time. And I want them to find their joy. And if you find that joy, whether it's in politics or outside of it, great. If you find that joy as a conservative or as a leftist, great. If you find that joy as a Muslim or a Catholic, great. If you find that joy, great. Love that. Do that. I really think finding your joy leads you furthest from evil, that construct of evil, which ultimately makes you a better society or member of society. I don't think joyful people kill and rape people. I don't believe that joyful people hurt people. Right? So governments are not people. Governments are entities. And so governments might murder and kill people. But I think individuals that are joyful don't do that. Um, so obviously I don't care if you're a Muslim or if you're a man or if you're black or if you're whatever. Because if you're joyful, you would be chill and we're going to get along. And I think fear is what makes people afraid of each other and fear is what makes you crazy. And fear is what makes you kill people preemptively because you're worried about what they'll do. And fear is what makes you prison in pe um, prison people um, unjustly because you're afraid of what they'll do. And discriminating makes you – it's all fear, dude. So ultimately, like, good discussion and all that, bro. But also, damn, exhausting. Gamer says government shouldn't kill people either. I mean, obviously not. But also, that's a very different game, right? And I do think governments are reflections of the collective and what we allow. I think the world is perfect the way it is because it's exactly what it wants it to be at this state in history. We are living history. As much as that makes people want to kill themselves, that's what you are, dude. You are just another number in a history book that will refer to you as the population that existed in, like here and then and when. That's what you fucking are. So if you want to spend your limited time on earth fighting governments, you do you, right? If you want to spend your limited time on earth being, you know, whoever, you do you, right? You do you. <sighs> Discord said, what do you feel like you gain from these panels? Are you looking to get extra eyes on your content, spread your message? Or are they just fun? Why do you delve into these storms genuinely curious? Well, I don't usually do political panels for the record. I like social commentary. I think Rashad and I are going to have really good conversations about men's issues. And if he talks to me like a person, which I think he will, we'll have a really good convo about it. Um, I actually want to prove my work by having these discussions because sometimes when people hear me talk solo and they don't see the bubbles in action, they think I'm just like talking about woo-woo stuff. But like, was this not a good example of bubbles? Does this not prove my narrative that we all exist within bubbles and we think these things are real? So as much as the audience thinks, oh, like we know what bubbles are. There are new people every day coming into my content and I want to have a bigger audience because I want to make sure this is my job forever, which means I want to introduce this idea to people, but they have to see it in action. So it's a great way to meet other communities and it's a good way to snatch a couple people from their communities, make ours bigger. But ultimately, this is my example of a bubble. We just saw a bunch of bubbles yelling at each other and then 
One of them in particular, which I will not interact further on, Lav is officially banned. I'm not doing panels with Lav. I'd rather not be on panels. I'd rather just keep hosting my own. She's such a disingenuous, like, thinker. And I just think it's, like, a waste of everyone's time to have her on a panel. And I think they only bring her on because she's, like, clickbait. And I th- I think as a woman, if you want to be a pick me and a debate because you want to be clickbait, girl, that's your decision, girl. But I am just so glad that I am not the reason people watch streams because they know I'm going to lose it on stream. But I do think that's why they watch live. And that's fucking sad. Like, that's fucking sad. And I just don't want to be a part of that because I think she plays into it. I do. She goes so personal. She tries to trigger you on purpose by going personal, which is such such, such a like sad thing to do. But I think it makes sense because I do obviously think she's – um not in her joy and so she's obviously thinking it's within reason like look it's not within my values to go for personal in that particular way but it's obviously within hers which means she's an unsafe person she doesn't have an like a value system that I can follow right so I just can't engage with that behavior but you know um you and Lab don't historically do not get along no we did get along but if you – but she chooses not to get along with people. There is a panel of me and her and Eridai getting along just fine. We're getting along. I'm happy to get along with people, but she is too mean. Like, not mean and like a, oh, she called me fat. But, like, she's too inconsistent and cruel, and I don't think she's reflecting her real values. If you have real values, I can get along with you. If you don't have real values, I'm not going to get along with you. You know what I mean? Like if you have a true passion and a value system that speaks to you, I'm here for it. I want to learn about it. I want to dive into it. I want to explore it. I don't even care if we agree because I think we all live in bubbles. I don't need to agree with you. My work is predicated on us not believing. My work says it is necessary that we do not agree in order for us to all live a joyful life. But it is also necessary for us to live in proper societies that allow us to agree within our societies. So my work is literally saying, don't agree with me. Tell me who you are and why you're that way. And I don't think she knows. I just don't think she knows who she is. I don't even think she knows why she thinks what she's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Turbo says she's the kid that purposely gets on your nerves and asks why you're upset with them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. The hope is to trigger you and then they can point the finger at you and say, like, see how you're triggered. I've had this technique used on me plenty of times in my life. I know it when I see it, and I think those people are absolutely psychopaths. I feel like, I'm not literally, but kind of. Like, I think you have to be a pretty fucked up person to do that to someone. Like, I think you have to be kind of, like, you know when people describe a bully? I think that's what they mean. When I describe a bully, I mean somebody who's, like, not had enough, like, regulation and is, like, kind of picking on someone and bullying someone. But I think that is what a real bully is, is somebody who, like, tries to be cruel to you and then laugh at you for being sensitive to their cruelty. So I think that's, you know what I mean? That's what it is. And so I think, um, yeah, yeah. I think that Lav is like incredibly cruel. And I think she does it because like she obviously wasn't loved as a child. You know what I mean? Or something. Or she's a psychopath. Yeah, Machiavellian. It's very cruel. It's like, look, I can be mean. I can be a bully, but I would never on purpose try to fucking trigger someone. Like, that's so cruel to bring up my borderline and to bring up my stuff. Like, I get it. She's in love with me. (laughs) She's obviously flirting with me, bro. She obviously fucking wants me, bro. No, she obviously is, like, very insecure. I get it. Um... But yeah, I don't like humans like that. I think they evolved and they're maladaptive and I think it's fine and I've accepted it. But man, nah, dude, not good for my skin, bro. Look at my skin. I'm not even wearing foundation today, girls. I'm not even wearing foundation. Okay, I've got this little thing here that's always got issues, but otherwise like got a little blush on my face. Okay, I've got a little scarring from my teen years, but like, okay, not good for your face, you know? Chelsea says, I just discovered you when you made your video reacting to Jake Doolittle's video about Ethan's health journey. I love the way you articulate. You're so passionate. There we go, baby. That's who we need in the community, bro. 
We need good people in the community that are open to discussion and disagreement, but not cruel, unnecessary bullying. I thought it was pretty nice to Jake Doolittle, but I'm sure it's pretty heavy. You know what I mean? To handle the the criticism that he got at the rate he did, you know? Um, oh, Discord says, sorry, I wanted to, I let you all down. I wanted to call in. No, that's okay. Like, no biggie. Next time I do a wick panel, though, guys, you can always just, like, think about it. Because I think he usually does call-ins afterwards. So you guys are welcome to call in. But you don't have to, you know? Um, yeah. Discord says I don't mind political panels occasionally. But fuck laugh. She's just looking for attention. Well, that's the point. She is. And I just can't give it to her. She is looking for attention. And I just can't give it to her. It's too exhausting. I have more important people in my life that need my attention. Lav is looking for attention and I just genuinely can't give it to her. She's like the little girl at the birthday party who's like, it's not her birthday party, but she makes it about her. I can't. She doesn't let anyone else be the main character. You know, I've talked about this before with friendship groups, but the good part about having so many siblings is I really grew up learning like you're not always the main character. Like you're always the main character, but it's not always about you. So like learn to celebrate other people other than yourself. And I don't think Lav learned how to do that. You know, I don't think Lav has picked up the skill to celebrate other people. And I think that's probably her major issue. Like, I'm so lucky I grew up with so many siblings. Because you really, like, you celebrate them. You love them. You really, like, like, you let them have their fucking moments, dude. You know? Even when you talk over each other. Like, I can't tell you how many siblings and I have had, like, discussions like this. And then we'll be talking over each other too much. and like, hey, hey. Let him talk. Let him talk, you know? And it's like, it's, it's and to encourage everyone to be like, let them have their moment. Yeah, and I think that's a skill you got to learn in life. You got to learn to give people their moment. Uh, Ira says, in every moment she brought up your borderline, I was looking at you, hoping you were able to keep your composure under her attempts to trigger you. That's not easy. Be proud of yourself, girl. Honestly, bro, my WWE, I was like, I'm going to body slam you, bitch. I'm going to body slam you, bitch. Like, every part of me is like, you're so lucky you're a girl, bro. Because if you were a boy, I would threaten to fight you, bro. She's so lucky she's a fucking female, bro. If she was a boy, I would have fought her, bro. I would have fucking fought her like a bear, bro. She's lucky she's a girl, bro. Can't bully women. They're sensitive, bro. Literally, she's lucky she's a boy, bro. Those are fighting words, bro. She's so, wait, she's so lucky she's a girl, bro. She's like, she's lucky I'm a boy and I got to respect her boundaries and shit. No, but for real, though, she was trying. And I am actually proud of myself for keeping my composure because, honestly, my Middle Eastern sassy-ass bitch voice was about to come out and be like, I will fucking cut you, bitch. In the name of all women. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, she's cute, though. One thing about Lav, though, she's pretty. I bet that fucked her up growing up, bro. She is pretty, damn. It's hard not it's hard not to notice how pretty Lab is, you know. But honestly, Fairy, 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 what's her name? Fairy? Fairy. She's pretty too. She's actually all the women were pretty. Like, I don't even know what I'm playing at. Like, it was a panel full of beautiful women. And then the men. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 